Today on NBC Sports, it's a doubleheader baseball day. For the first half, it's the Cincinnati Reds in Montreal. They'll be facing Al Oliver and the Expos. Montreal, red hot, they've won seven straight games. Or the Chicago White Sox, they're battling for first place as they meet Cleveland. The White Sox and Lamar Hoyt, he's 9-0. He'll be trying to stop the slugging Cleveland Indians in Bake McBride. Later today, the Milwaukee Brewers travel to Anaheim, new home of Reggie Jackson as they challenge the first place Angels. Or it's the National League Western leaders, the hot Atlanta Braves. They'll be trying to stop the charge of Gary Matthews and the Philadelphia Phillies. Plus highlights from other games throughout the day. But first up, it's Major League Baseball, an inside look with a report on career-threatening rotator cuff injuries and its latest victim, Rick Burleson. All today on NBC Sports. NBC Sports presents Major League Baseball, an inside look at baseball and a preview of today's Game of the Week. Brought to you by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by Wagner Power Painter, the airless paint sprayer that's faster and easier than a brush or roller. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Olympic Stadium in Montreal on a beautiful baseball day. And greetings from NBC, a big doubleheader of baseball action for you. The emphasis will be on pitching in the opening games you'll see today here in Montreal for Cincinnati. Tom Saber, one of the game's greats, one and six, ERA near seven. Is it a 37-year-old pitcher getting too old, or as Tom says, maybe it's just his mechanics. We'll watch him closely. He goes against the best pitching team in the National League, Montreal, and they've won seven in a row. And in Cleveland, Chicago's Lamar Hoyt, nine straight wins. For that story, let's go to Jay Randolph. Thanks, Dick Enberg. Here in Cleveland, we visit with Lamar Hoyt, a man who today goes for his 15th consecutive victory. And uh, I read the other day where you said it's just another baseball game. Yeah, really, it's uh, just another game to me. I'm out there trying to do the same things I always have to uh, be successful at getting guys out, and uh, that's, that's the way I'm going to approach the game. You battled your way out of the bullpen, and you've really done a splendid job. Some of the uh, fellows that I talk to talk about your slurve. They say it's a half curve and a half slider. Yeah, well, uh, it's a big breaker. I throw uh, a variety of breaking balls. That's just one of them. And uh, I throw a fastball that runs in and out. So uh, if they're looking for either one, you know, I got something to counter with. Lamar, are you thinking a little bit about the record, the American League record 17, the Major League record 24? You're going for 15 today? Well, basically, I'm just taking them one at a time. You know, I'm just trying to get by these guys right now. And if I can do that, then that'll, that'll be fine. The item that I'm most interested in is your maturity and the poise that you have and it's come to you over the last couple of years yeah well uh, that's that's something that comes with age fortunately uh, you learn a little bit as you get older and uh, maybe you get a little bit better as the years wear on and uh, if your arm holds up you should be able to do pretty good you know with the experience you get so just try to make the most out of it and uh, take it as far as you can really we look forward to seeing you here this afternoon let's go back to Montreal and Bob Costas Jay, Tony Canigliaro had been in a coma for almost four months after suffering a near-fatal heart attack, and doctors held out little hope for any kind of significant improvement. However, this week, almost miraculously, Tony spoke his first coherent words as he said hello to his mother, and now there is cautious optimism about continued improvement, even though doctors caution that a complete recovery is still very unlikely. Tony C's story tops our news of the week. Tony C's story has been one of promise and loss. Once the youngest player to lead the American League in homers, he was struck by a Jack Hamilton pitch in 1967. And despite a valiant comeback try which met with some success, he was never really the same player again. On Tuesday night in San Diego, Ferguson Jenkins became the seventh man to reach the 3,000 strikeout plateau, fanning the Padres' Gary Templeton, and a standing ovation for Fergie from the Padre fans. Not so happy was Jenkins' manager, Lee Elia. Another Cubs star, Bill Buckner, has claimed that he's been thrown at a lot of late. He wants Elia and other Cub pitchers to protect him. When he felt they weren't, he got into a shoving match in the dugout with Elia, but at week's end, both parties said it was all okay. 
And Dave Winfield's Winfield Foundation is suing Yankee owner George Steinbrenner for almost $3 million for allegedly not complying with an agreement that the Yankees contribute the $3 million over 10 years to the foundation, which provides health care and tickets to ball games to underprivileged kids. Foundation lawyers claim only $155,000 was donated by the Yanks. Yankee lawyers say the rest has been withheld because there was some question about how the funds were distributed and who sits on the foundation's board. But according to Winfield Foundation lawyers, those differences were previously resolved to Steinbrenner's satisfaction. Well, Winfield and Steinbrenner may differ as to how the foundation does its work, but there's no dispute that the payments have not been made on schedule. More interestingly, what will this do to the eight and a half years which still remains on Winfield's contract and his relationship with the boss? Now, when we return to Olympic Stadium in Montreal, we'll hear the most dreaded words in any ball player's vocabulary, rotator cuff injury. Stay with us. Johnny Bench. This is Krylon Spray Paint, the other leading national brand. And here comes my fast pitch, so watch close. Krylon Special Formula goes on smooth, just like a professional finish. And just 12 minutes later, it's dry to the touch. No runs, no drips, no errors. The other brand's still tacky after one hour. Let's see it again. Krylon dry after 12 minutes. Other brand's still tacky after one hour. Did you catch that? Krylon, for a smooth, fast professional finish. This guy owns a sleek weed eater trimmer with its top-mounted gas engine. This guy bought another brand with the engine down here. So instead of all the controls and starter at his fingertips, he's got this. Instead of an engine that can't be bumped when cutting close, he's got this. And weed eater's engine is up and away from flying grass and dust, not down in them. So when you can have a trimmer that keeps you on top, why stoop to anything else? Weed eater, on top for a lot of good reasons. <laughs> Light beer from Miller tastes just great, and that's no fish story. But the best thing is, it's less filling. Light's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and that's important when you're trying to land that big one. Like yesterday, I hooked this bass, fought him for over six hours. All of a sudden, he jumps clean over the boat. Broke my rod, and I had to tie the... No, wait a minute, fellas. I had to tie the... Light beer from down. Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Left me out there with nothing but a paddle. The rotator cuff injury, it seems to be the baseball affliction of the 70s and 80s. Usually, it affects pitchers, but players who play other positions are not immune, as the California Angels shortstop, the rooster, Rick Burleson, found out. I had had cortisone shots throughout my career, and uh, basically, I averaged maybe three or four a year, to, and it kept me in the lineup, uh, so to speak. And, uh, I would get them when the pain was so severe or the tendon was so inflamed. And it, I knew that it wasn't a healer, but that it, was, uh, it would shrink the swelling and it would allow me to play. Rick Burleson had experienced pain in his arm before, but the cortisone injections had camouflaged the inevitable, a torn rotator cuff from too much stress. As soon as I threw it, I knew that there was something wrong. It felt as if uh, someone drove a nail into the back of my arm with a sledgehammer. Four or five minutes later, when we had a double play ball, and I came across the bag and, and had to spin, and the throw sort of took me off towards the inside, that uh, when I threw that ball, I knew that there was severe damage. I just I wasn't able to lift up my arm, and I had to come right off the field. It has the potential of probably being a career-ending injury for many athletes, and in many cases it has been, but by the very nature of a rotator cuff tear, it's a devastating injury. Dr. Lewis Yoakum performed the surgery on Rick. What we're talking about in the rotator cuff is the area of the shoulder. There's four basic muscles that come in and form a cuff-like tendinous group around the shoulder, which is called the rotator cuff. Rick suffered what is called a level three tear of about a centimeter, which is serious enough to end a career. You read so much about this injury and not too many people have been able to come back from it. Although most of them have been pitchers and uh, it's, it's a lot tougher on them, I understand. But the way I looked at it, as hard as I throw, and many times I throw a ball each day and in the plays I have uh, I'm as close to being a pitcher as anybody as far as uh, how hard I have to throw the ball. No pitcher has been able to come back from the surgery yet. Well not really. Wayne Garland is still trying in the minors. Steve Busby tried but wasn't as effective as he was before the surgery. And Don Gullett's tear was so bad he never pitched again. Clearly Burleson has an uphill battle. The thing we have to remember is that it's a long-term rehabilitation. We're talking at least a year to a year and a half of intensive physical therapy following the surgery. 
if I'm able to come back after the long rehabilitation program and uh, many ups and downs in the next several months that I'm going to have, uh, I might be better from it all. Uh, I might be able to play without pain that I haven't, that I've uh, lived with on and off for the last nine years. And uh, uh, I feel confident that I'm going to make it back and uh, I'm going to be a better player from this. Fred Rogan, NBC Sports. And Fred, while well, several pitchers struggle in the minors to try and come back from rotator cuff surgery, another pitcher who's had a different variety of arm ailments tries a comeback of his own. It's Mark the Bird Fidrich, who's now nesting in Pawtucket, a Red Sox farm team. We'll check in with the Bird when we continue after this. Once you put motor on a can, you can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't watch it work. So how do you know how good it is? At Quaker State, we put it in writing. We back up our quality with a lifetime guarantee. How do you know how good Quaker State is? We guarantee every new car engine against all related failure for as long as you own your car. We put it in writing. We're working to keep your car staying on the road. How do you know how good Quaker State is? We put it in writing. No one else does. 17 hours. That's how long it took us to paint this house with the brush. Then we painted it in just six and a half hours with the Wagner Power Painter. This wicker chair took over an hour, but less than five minutes with a Wagner Power Painter. A shutter that took 20 minutes, a Power Painter finished in only three. It's a tool so versatile, it has a flexible spray tip and a way to draw paint right from a can. A Wagner Power Painter. It's the right tool for painting. Powerful women attack the bar and assault the record books. Plus, exciting martial artists drive flesh and bone through solid material. And the men's Chudichi Cup gymnastics from Japan. On NBC Sports World, tomorrow. Oh, my, Mark Fidrich was so special. Remember the rookie year, 1976, with the Tigers, 19 and 9, led the American League in the ERA. They called him the bird. The fans loved him, the way he'd talk to the baseball and smooth the mound's dirt and cheered his uh, teammates after a victory. Then, the problem that hit so many big league pitchers. They fear it, but it does happen. The sore arm, the wounded wing, and back to the minor leagues went Fidrich to try to get himself in shape. He's now pitching for the Boston Red Sox Farm Club in Pawtucket. And Mark the Bird Fedrich is now the subject of Dick McCormick's song about dreams of coming back. This fear and the sadness rob us of our reason. The crazy twist of fortune that can bring us to our knees. They tell me in Pawtucket there's one bird trying to be. Young a little longer and eternal. We're tossed on the wind like a pitcher hurls the ball. So here's to you and here's to us all. With our eyes on the skies and our backs against the wall. Dreams are more than liars, they're birds that never fall. Here's to the proud one. Eagles who know the light headed heights summers long ago, and here's to the brave ones who fall down and then rise up again and try again. Cause we're tossed on the wind like a pitcher hurled the ball. Here's to you. And here's to us all With our eyes on the skies And our backs against the wall Dreams are more than liars They're birds that never fall And they tell me in Pawtucket There's one bird I tried to be Young a little longer And eternally free Poignant. 
the raw reality of it all is that fame is so fleeting for the athlete and it's kind of saddens me because he brought so much happiness just a few years ago. Let's hope Mark Fidrich makes it back. Big day of baseball and a big story here in Montreal. Tom Seaver, one and six. Can he get his pitching game back together against the Red Hot Expo? Some of you see Lamar Hoyt going for ten in a row here in 1982. And in the second half of our doubleheader on NBC, Milwaukee against the Angels in California. And Atlanta and Philadelphia meet at Veterans Stadium. Sunday, Rodman plants his son at the orphanage in order to close down the school. He's got the information he came after. Then, Ponch enjoys a movie assignment until a deadly menace threatens the cast on Chip. Then, Raquel Welch stars in a story of love and survival. The Legend of Walks Far Woman, a world premiere movie Sunday, right after Father Murphy and Chips. All you light beers out there? You've met your mats. New Mats Premium Light. Long blast to left field, his ninth home run of the year. And the Expos had a 4-2 victory. With the win, Montreal has stretched its string to seven in a row, moving to within four games of first in the National League East. Cincinnati's defeat slammed the struggling Reds into last place in the West. Eight games under 500. Today, it's Tom Seaver, uncharacteristic one and six, against Montreal's ace, Steve Rogers, six and three, and the best ERA in the National League. Sports presents the Major League Baseball Game of the Week. Today from Olympic Stadium, it's the Cincinnati Reds and the Montreal Expos. The Game of the Week is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer, who invites you to test drive the 1982 Ford Cars and Trucks. By Light Beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. By Gillette, makers of Atra and Just Whistle Racers. Gillette's Beche for both of you. And by Goodyear, for more good years in your car. Beautiful day in Montreal, Olympic Stadium, the scene, the Montreal Expo, seven consecutive victories. Host, the Cincinnati Reds. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg with Bob Costas. Welcome to a big doubleheader of baseball on NBC. And today we'll see the right-hander Tom Seaver for Cincinnati. 14-2 and two a year ago, uncharacteristically 1-6 and six this year, the ERA approaching seven runs a game. Tom Terrific kind of symbolizes what's happened to the Reds early this season. Nine games back of Atlanta and in the basement in the National League West. After losing last night, 4-2. to two. And in contrast, the Expos send out their ace right-hander, Steve Rogers. He's 6-3 and three and leads the National League pitchers in ERA. The Expos had a little bit of difficulty early. They had 16 different lineups in their first 33 games. Now they've settled on young Terry Francona behind the explosive Tim Raines in the number two spot, and they've won seven in a row. Montreal making its move. Good pitching and timely hitting. They host the Cincinnati Reds today. Tom Seaver trying to win his second game of the year. We'll be back with the starting lineups in just a moment. Now, there's a new concept in pickups that's turning the import world upside down. It's America's new size 83 Ford Ranger with gas mileage that beats the top-selling import. And Ranger also turns them inside out with a cab wider than any import. And Ford's exclusive twin I-beam. Ranger turns the imports right around with double wall box size. Don't try that with an import. Yes, the import world is being turned upside down by Ranger with two-year Ford care protection plus hundreds of dollars in cash back now. You know, baseball is the same in Japan as it is in America. Mm -hmm. You played nine innings. Three strikes and you're out. Well, out and after the game, there's nothing like a beer. Mm -hmm. And when Numa's in town, I treat him to light beer from Miller because it tastes great. Mm -hmm. Cream la. Yeah, I know it's less filling, but we drink it because it tastes great. Cream da. Listen, Numa, it tastes great. See y'all, cream da. All right, it's less filling. Mm -hmm. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And cream da. Well, you set a record. Yep. What pitcher ever gave up 34 runs in an inning? You feel better after a shower. I don't feel better. Let me see that soap. Smells like medicine. Try this coast. Boy, coast smells terrific. Feels terrific. I feel terrific. And look at this leather. I feel so great. I'll be ready to pitch again tomorrow. You may be. I'm not sure baseball is. 
No other soap picks you up quite like Coast, the eye-opener. Suppose your loved one's heart and breathing stopped unexpectedly. Would you know what to do? The answer is CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Don't stand by helplessly while a loved one is dying. Help save a life. Learn the life-saving techniques of CPR. Call your local chapter of the American Red Cross or the American Heart Association for information about CPR training. Learn the life-saving skills of CPR and help save a loved one's life. Baseball cares. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. And cost is well the answer to it anyway. We'll give the lineup today. I'm Johnny Bench and this is Gary Carter. And for the Cincinnati Reds, leading off will be Eddie Milner. He'll be playing in right field. Young hitter that's got good speed. I think he does. He's uh, awfully fast on the base pass, so uh, if you say so, John, you know, I'll go with it. That's what I taught the kid. Follow <laughs> me, right? Ron Oster, he's batting second, playing second base. Dave Concepcion, the shortstop, he's having a good year. And batting cleanup, Dan Dreesen, who's really swinging a hot bat. He is swinging the hot bat, and uh, you don't want to throw him a first ball fastball because he's jumping on it like crazy, and he is definitely in a groove right now. That's why he's batting fourth. Cesar Sedano will be the fifth-place hitter. He's batting. He's playing in center field. The sixth-place hitter is Larry Bittner in left field. I'm playing third, batting You're seventh. You're playing third. Now, he got me there again. The other kid got hurt. Oh, he did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> batting eighth, the catcher for today's game, Michael Barry, replacing Alex Trevino for today's game, and the pitcher, Tom Seaver. He's struggling. Well, he's struggling, but he's a premier pitcher. He's a veteran. He knows how to pitch, so I think he's uh, due for a big, big one today. But, uh, hey, we got to keep our streak going. Steve Rogers, the counterpart, 6-3. and three, That brilliant 1.74 ERA is a couple of shutouts this year. He has the best earned run average of any starting pitcher in the National League. There are his numbers for the year. Young man from, well, not so young now, 32, out of Springfield, Missouri, and Tulsa University. Rogers remembered for one pitch that he threw back in October here in Olympic Stadium, Montreal, when he served up the home run to Rick Monday in relief in the deciding game of the National League playoffs, and the Dodgers went on to the series and the championship. Dick Enberg, Bob Costas, welcome to Montreal. There's the defensive alignment, Robert. Wallach at third and Spire at short with Tim Raines having moved from left field to second base one of many lineup changes this year for the Expos Al Oliver acquired in the trade just before the season started from Texas is at first back of the plate it's Gary Carter and in the outfield they'll go with Francona in left Dawson in center and Warren Cromartie in right Eddie Milner the speedy live left handed hitting leadoff man batting at 252 Lines it to the shortstop. Spire with an ice cream cone catch. What away. Look at Spire as he smiles over at Wallach at third base. That was not that difficult a chance. It was hit hard, but Spire had a beat on it, and it almost escaped him. It's the kind of hitter Milner is. He'll go to the opposite field. Not that much power. A line drive type hitter. One down. That ball was starting to sail, and Spire just did get the webbing on it. One out. Ron Oster hit his first home run of the year last evening and showed his power as he clubbed it to the opposite field. He slashes this one foul. Good crowd on hand at Olympic Stadium, 25 to 30,000 range. And singing Valdery Valdera before the first pitch must have brought back memories of that playoff series which you broadcast last year. That's right, Bob. And uh, the Expos were happy wanderers. They won six in a row on that road trip and put their act in order they've been brilliant at home through the last several seasons but not this year they were four and ten on their last home stand and there were a lot of grumbling then he went out and won all six road games and it's a whole different environment the championship gonflon or at least the mini championship oyster oster uh, hits that one foul same spot and the count remains 0 and two prior to this year dick as you mentioned in the last three seasons the expos have played 680 baseball at home and just 9 and 13 coming into this game so they're making their move and they figure to play much better at home and they're only four games out of first again fouled back Oster Cincinnati product idolized Pete Rose switch hitter like his idol He's built himself up using a Nautilus program, added 20 pounds in the last couple of years, and he showed that power last evening. Rogers guns the fastball by him. There's two gone. 
Poster not the kind of hitter who strikes out frequently. But Rogers sends him down swinging. Looks as if he might have gone after ball one. Now you'll watch Rogers. He examines the baseball, tries to find the seam that he likes, sets it in his glove, and then he knows exactly where it is. We're going to talk about the baseball and the fact that, as Lamar Hoyt has said, that there is no perfect baseball. Everything you get has either a lump in it or a stitch out of line or something that you can use as a pitcher to your benefit. And there's a ball that Rogers didn't like. And we'll make an exchange. And usually it means that the ball does not have high seams. Pitchers basically want a ball with the seams up. It gives them a better grip, especially on the breaking balls. And if Rogers, and we talked about him uh, about this with him before the game, if Rogers gets a ball that doesn't have that high seam, then he'll fire it back. Two and oh. Dave Concepcion checking in at 290. Smothers at foul. Here were the comments of Steve Rogers regarding his relationship. But it used to be the horse side. I'm always looking at the baseball, feeling it, touching it. You got to. That's how I make my living. But one thing I found is the inconsistency in the seams. I'm always looking at the seams to find the biggest one to put my finger on because I feel like. Since the seams make the pitch move, I might as well find the best one to get my finger on. I'm always out there checking it over. Someday maybe I'll even throw a good pitch with it. Well, he almost didn't on that serve to Concepcion, and Dawson caught it in the pocket of the glove on the warning path about uh, 390 in right center. No score after a half inning. This is Just Whistle, Gillette's twin blade razor for women. It pivots, adjusts to every curve to give a girl a smooth and easy shave. This is Atra, Gillette's twin blade razor for men. It pivots, adjusts to every curve to give a guy a close and comfortable shave. Just whistle for her? Atra for him. And they both use Atra blades. Is that where my blades have been going? Gillette's best shave for both of you. I'm Johnny Bench. This is Krylon Spray Paint, the other leading national brand. And here comes my fast pitch, so watch close. Krylon Special Formula goes on smooth, just like a professional finish. And just 12 minutes later, it's dry to the touch. No runs, no drips, no errors. The other brand's still tacky after one hour. Let's see it again. Krylon dry after 12 minutes. Other brand's still tacky after one hour. Did you catch that? Krylon, for a smooth, fast professional finish. Hi, I'm Gary Carter, and I'll give the Montreal Expos lineup today. We got Timmy Raines leading off. One of the fastest men in baseball and playing second base for us today. What do you think, John? Hasn't run that much of late. I don't know if he's hurt or he just doesn't want to, but uh, he can do it anytime he wants to. Well, I definitely feel because it's the second hitter. Rodney Scott was there the last couple of years, protected him a little bit more. We've got Terry Francona playing left field and batting second. More of a free swinger. And Tito, as his dad was called, uh, <laughs> he's coming into his own and is going to be one of the better players around the league. Well, now you're starting to get in the meat of the lineup, and, of course, your first two guys are what carry you. And Andre Dawson, to me, is one of the best outfielders in the major leagues today, one of the best players in the major leagues. He can do it all, and he may be the MVP. Yes, definitely. Al Oliver playing first base. Uh, yours truly batting fifth and catching. How they can keep running you out there, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Warren Cromarty batting, batting sixth and playing right field. Tim Wallach playing third base and doing an outstanding job for us there and swinging the bat excellently. We also got Chris Fowler uh, batting eighth, playing shortstop. And Steve Cy Rogers. <laughs> That's right. Cy Young, watch him. He believes that. If he wasn't an Okie, I wouldn't even talk That's about That's exactly it. right. And that'll round up our lineup today. John, good luck today. And uh, we hope to keep our winning streak alive. All right, back to you. All right. I'll tell you. they're a little too good. Well, it's kind of scary, isn't it? <laughs> they make me nervous. Of course, at least they're not as good looking as we are. That's one thing we have on them. Carter and Bench. Well, you're talking about uh, the last 20 years of catching in the National League. That's it. Carter, the, the new star on the block. Leading it off, Tim Raines. Tom Seaver on the mound, and we'll be watching his pitching motion. He's tried to simplify his problems. He said it seems little, but it magnifies itself. Keep the left shoulder driving toward the plate. He says, I keep opening up too soon. High to center, Sedeno. A circuitous route, but finds it at the edge of the warning track. 
the last time you were in this ballpark, uh, this fella, Tom Seaver, was sitting where I am now next to you as he was your broadcast partner, Dick. That's right, and really enjoyed the, the baseball that I learned from Tom. And I, I expected to find, you know, he's got the redneck now and then, this Tom. And when he's one and six, I really was, uh, I approached him rather cautiously this weekend. But he's been very generous. He said they've analyzed it inside out. He said, despite what people want to say, I don't have an old arm. My arm is fine. I feel fine. Francona fouls it away. He said it's pitching mechanics, and for a man who has been such a student of pitching, uh, it has to be more frustrating for Seaver because he knows exactly what he's doing wrong. And like the rest of us, golfers and tennis, we know we're doing it wrong. We can't correct it. Says he's opening that left shoulder up too much on the delivery. Smothered up the first baseline. Francona, fair ball? No, foul ball. It is the home plate umpire's call until it passes first base. And plate umpire Dave Pallone waved it foul. Satch Davidson, the umpire at first, Terry Tate at second, and Jerry Dale at third. And of course, it's the position of the ball. Dreesen was in fair territory, but the ball was just over the line as he reached for it with the glove. Someone down in that Cincinnati dugout yelling at Pallone. He's motioning it was outside the line. There's the defense of the Reds. And in the outfield, especially in left field, it's suspect with Bittner, who is not a very good fielder. Cedeno, of course, a fine center fielder. And Eddie Milner has really impressed in right field something you'll see Milner doing during batting practice he shags flies off the bat rather than fungos which gives him a better idea about the ball's trajectory Francona the, the shortstop Concepcion to Dreesen two away Tom Seaver he had a preseason injury and also the flu here's what he had to say about getting ready I've definitely been having my trouble uh, uh, my troubles one of the things that's been happening I feel is that my left side have been opening it up too much and if you open up your left side too much, uh, the arm either has to drop down or drop out, and the ball is very flat, and uh, there's really no life at the hitting zone. So one of the things that I'm going to try to do and, and get accomplished today is keep my front side closed and get uh, more energy going right directly toward home plate as opposed to off to the left side. Andre Dawson takes a strike. You know, one uh, interesting aspect of sports regardless of what the game is what Tom Seaver just said applies to striking whatever it is a tennis ball a golf ball pitching boxing bench a tough play and he won't get it nonetheless instructive Dick about how well Johnny Bench has adapted to play at third base he had little chance to get Dawson who runs extremely well and yet he handles this ball barehanded and cleanly now, there's not a third baseman in the league that would have thrown out Dawson on that ball and the first hit of the game belongs to the brilliant center fielder of the Montreal Expos. Al Oliver at 35 traded here to Montreal and when that news hit baseball's world everyone said now the Expos really should run away in the National League East. They have not but due to no fault of Oliver his usual 300 batting average lifetime 303. He's 301 as we open play today. Dawson will bear watching. Last year he had 26 stolen bases in the shortened year. Oliver went around. Some people think Dick that Dawson has a chance to become a 40-40 man with his speed and power. Were it not for the presence of Mike Schmidt. Dawson would probably get most people's vote as the best all-round player in the league. And finished second last year to the Philadelphia third baseman. 40-40. No one's ever done that. Only five have been in the 30-30 club. Bobby Bonds did it several times. Of course, Willie Mays came as close to anyone to be inducted into 40 home run, 40 stolen base club. Dawson has that potential. That's really he, he's the decathlon man of baseball. He's got the upper body power and he's got the lower body speed. There he goes. But Oliver can't check his swing on an inside slider. And he's out of there. And so are the Expos. No runs to hit. And they leave a man. After one inning on a marvelous day in Montreal, 80 degrees, the Reds, the Expos, no score. Who is America's leader in radials? Goodyear. We outsell all foreign radials combined. And here's one reason why. The Goodyear Eagle GT, a high-performance radial that gives a great performance in the rain.
with outstanding traction and superb handling on wet, slippery turns. The Goodyear Eagle GT. It's one reason Goodyear is the leader in radials. No foreign maker of radials even comes close. When you need radials, come up to Goodyear. It's the dawn of a great new taste when you come to the place called Silver Creek. It's a western cut brand, won't float around, a smokeless tobacco with flavor unbound. <laughs> Silver Creek brand. It sweeps you to mountains where fresh breezes blow, to a whisper of wintergreen, cool Silver with the Creek. snow, to the moisture and flavor that just seem to flow through Silver Creek. So if you're looking for pleasure at its peak, don't follow the crowd, follow the creek. Silver Creek smokeless tobacco. Daytona 82, the Honda 900 F Superbikes. They follow the leader with the world's fastest motorcycles. They break the lap record. They break the track record. They cross the finish line. First, second, and third. The CB 900 F. It didn't just win the race. It was the race. Powerful women attack the bar and assault the record books. Plus, exciting martial artists drive flesh and bone through solid material. And the men's Chudichi Cup gymnastics from Japan. On NBC Sports World, tomorrow. Steve Rogers and Tom Seaver have faced each other seven times. Rogers with a 3-2 edge, and there have been two no decisions. Rogers no stranger to dueling other aces. He beat Steve Carlton twice last year in the playoffs. And he faces Dan Dreesen, the Reds' hottest hitter, on a team that is hungry for some base hits. Dreesen at 305, hit safely in all but three of the last 21 Cincinnati games, batting 352 in that stretch to raise his average up over the 300 mark. 0 oh, and 2 the count. It'll be Dreesen, Cedeno, and Bittner. Steve Rogers among the starters in the National League, the best ERA. Don Sutton, the Astros, they come in next to Montreal. Martz, Sanderson, who won last night, 4 to 2. And Lee, Montreal, dominating the pitching statistics. Good changeup gets Greeson, second strikeout for Rogers. The Montreal team ERA is easily the lowest in the National League, and they have allowed just three runs in their last 39 innings of work. Only reliever Gene Garber of Atlanta has a lower ERA than Rogers, but he hasn't worked the required number of innings to meet the qualifications for the ERA leaders at this point in the year. Figure that 39 innings, that's the equivalent of four games plus three innings and only three runs. So that explains a 6-0 road trip. And Sanderson picked up with a victory last night, made only one mistake, a two-run homer by Oster. Cedeno, a solid single past the diving spire. And the Reds have their first base runner. Cedeno opened at 297. Well, watch Cedeno. He needs only a couple of stolen bases. And he would tie Clyde Milan for the number 10 spot all time with 495 steals. He's too shy. Stolen six so far this year. Larry Bittner, always a solid hitter through his big league career, and he's hitting 315 for. Cincinnati this season. He was hanging around the batting cage watching the Cardinals substitutes bat one day in St. Louis. Somebody asked him why. He said, I like to watch the Scrabinis hit. I can relate to them. <laughs> Played for the Washington Senators initially. But Ted Williams was very high on him. The thumper was the skipper of the Senators at the time. Wonder if Ted's watching today. I bet you he's out fishing down there in the Keys. electric personalities in this game but maybe it's just because uh, I worship the man and well, he just I could listen to him talk for hours to days. Did you ever see that chart that he put together an entire strike zone filled with baseballs in every possible location and he had the mark in the sweet spot 400 a little bit off the sweet spot 350 if you make me hit it low and outside I'm going to hit 230 and the basic idea was wait for your pitch make them throw you your pitch that was the message he gave all the young hitters some of them listen there goes the runner pitch out by Carter Reigns applies the tag Daniel came in hard, said something to Reigns afterward, but Carter guessed right with a pitch out. 
Dick Gary Carter has now nailed 21 of 47 potential base stealers, and any time you can be around 35% in throwing them out, that's excellent, and Carter is well above that. Let's see what happens here on the tag. So Daniel, a late slide. Bittner aims it at Dawson in center, and the inning is over. No runs a hit. The Reds do not leave a man as Gary Carter shoots down Cedeno trying to steal. We go to the home half of the second inning of Montreal. Expos and the Reds, no score. When you're a big guy like me, people always want to see just how strong you are. But after this arm works, this arm always relaxes with light beer from Miller. The light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it tastes great. What I like about it is it's less filling. Because when you're in a hot match like this, you can't afford to get filled up. You have the time? Yeah. <clears throat> Not 8.30. Yeah? Thanks. Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. <clears throat> and less. Next. Wherever men race to win, Champions Park Club will be there. You can be a winner, too. You can win a free trip to the Caesars Palace Grand Prix, Las Vegas. And you can find out if you're a winner by looking for the contest ad in these issues of Popular Mechanics, TV Guide, or Reader's Digest. Remove the coded instant winner card. Take it wherever you see this sign. Do it today. Win with Champion. The spark plug that wins the world over. Like a lot of people, I'm taking better care of my body. Better care of my skin, too. With Skin Bracer Aftershave. Shaving is rough, so I use Skin Bracer. It cools and smooths skin. Tightens pores. That's the tingle. Smells great, too. But Skin Bracer's not cologne. It's skin care that feels good. That's why more men are saying, thanks. I needed that. Skin Bracer, now in spice, too. Takes care of men who take care of their skin. Skin Bracer Aftershave. Bye, men. This is Byron Day in New York. In Cleveland, the Tribe is on the board first. Mike Har Hargrove hits his sacrifice fly to drive in Miguel de la Noe. But Billy Allman cuts the throw off from left field, and they get Toby Harris trying to sneak into second base. Cleveland leads it one zip, bottom of the first. And here in Cincinnati, no score. John McNamara will be 50 years old next week in Montreal, rather. Cincinnati manager McNamara reflective it's been a tough time for him uh, he's not only down in last place but he's lost some key players Tom Hume stepped on the track out on a warning path that serves for the execution of the football grandstand when they transfer this stadium into that alignment twisted his knee they didn't think it was serious then he couldn't uh, walk this morning so he's having that knee examined at the moment Hume the ace reliever of this club Wayne Krenchicki with a chip fracture of his thumb. He'll be out for about a week. And Frank Pastore, the starting pitcher, had to waive his turn last night. He'll go tomorrow after injuring himself in batting practice, a foul tip. Carter, the bench, and our duo on the pregame lineups. Greet each other one again. once again, and bench has the upper hand. The scores from last night, Sanderson the winner, Carter a homer in this 4-2 win for Montreal. The Cubs, with Keith Moreland staying hot with a homer, beat the Dodgers. San Francisco beats the Pirates 10-5. The Cardinals stay on top in the National League East. Bruce Suter picking up his 14th save. Bob Forge the winner. Houston beats the Mets 8-3. Atlanta and Philly rained out. Warren Cromarty against Tom Seaver. The Crow off to a slow start in 82 at 221. Last night, Cromarty was in the batting cage down in the bowels of Olympic Stadium with hitting coach Billy DeMar staying a an hour or so after the game to work on his hitting problems. Pulls that one to right field. Milner. Nick, sometimes I can't figure this ballpark out. Some balls that are very well hit did not appear to carry. And then you have a guy like Oster, who hadn't hit a homer all year, hits one out to the opposite field last night. Now let's see where he got this pitch. Down the middle, just a little inside, maybe, and I, the Seaver followed through. He must have wondered whether that was going to stay in the park. Tim Wallach, he's had some big hits this last week. 282 is average. There was a good heater from Seaver. That's the best fastball he's thrown. Wallach's emergence as the potential starting third baseman allowed them to trade Parrish along with a fine prospect named Dave Postedler to Texas for Al Oliver. Foul back. 
some critics of the Expos say they're playing a shortstop, a catcher, and six outfielders. And they say, why mess with a good thing? Best overall record in the National League for the past three years. That's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is that they've gone through the early season troubles, getting a lineup in order, and still trail St. Louis by only four games in their division. So they've hung reasonably tough, and now they're on a roll. Many feel, and I agree, they are the team to beat in the National League East. And this week, Charlie Lee and David Palmer both coming up with big pitching performances and victories on the road. And if they can live up to that kind of expectation, that, that's a rugged staff you have to face in Montreal. Charlie Lee retired 26 batters after yielding a first inning single in a game at Houston. Wallach, they set. Even with the outfield playing deep, they can't cut it off, and Wallach has a double. Perfect illustration of how AstroTurf has changed the game. That is a single on natural grass, but it just scoots on this carpet here in Montreal, and most National League fields are artificial surface fields. There are more natural surface ballparks in the American League, and Wallach gets a two-base hit. Came in tight on him, but he wasn't able to get it by him. Tom Seaver readily admits that he is no longer the power pitcher that he once was. But up until his difficulties of this year, he's been able to finesse hitters, still come with the occasional heater, and be an effective pitcher. If we can save that replay and show it again, just to see the follow-through of Seaver and why a little thing, it almost becomes an arithmetic problem. It grows and grows on you. The follow-through of Seaver, he was actually back on his heels and almost in a squatting position, not driving toward the plate and ready up on the balls of his feet. He was back. Watch uh, Seaver as he makes the pitch the follow through where he winds up now he's concentrating so hard and staying in tight within himself look at look at his position he was he wasn't driving forward he was back awkwardly on his heel two out double by Wallach and Spire flares at foul it's one and one Dick Spire is at 192 he has dipped beneath the Mendoza line as the ball players refer to it wait a minute the Mendoza line yes named affectionately for Mario Mendoza, weak hitting infielder. Tom Pachorek laid that nickname on him when they were teammates at Seattle. And any ball player who is beneath 200 has crossed the Mendoza line, as unfortunately for Spire, he has. <laughs> Mendoza line. Well, had a couple of hits last night. Breaking ball away. Two and one. Let's look at this pitch. Watch the left shoulder now. He kept it in there pretty well that time. We asked him about Pete Rose's comment that he Rose a week or so ago stated that he saw Seaver grimacing a lot as he pitched and I asked Tom if that were true and he said yes I'm trying so hard and when I get that left shoulder open too quickly I'm really hurrying my arm to try to catch up with my shoulder and I have to bear it on because it hurts. He said three things can happen you can throw a rotten pitch or you can hurry your arm forward and that hurts your arm. So he thinks that's how he injured it two years ago. And he was indeed grimacing. 2-2 two -two pitch. Got him. On the edge. That's the Tom Seaver pitch. His second strikeout. Wallach's two-out double is wasted by the Expos as he is left at second base. And we go to the third of a scoreless game. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Saturday, Stella becomes the mayor's assistant and turns the tables on Harper Valley. Then, it's double trouble when Grants asks two ladies on the same day. And the Mandrells welcome Donny Osmond. I really need a new copier. I wonder which one I should get. Rico. What? Pay attention. This is the Rico plain paper copier. Right. Rico copiers are designed for optimum performance and flexibility. They deliver work-saving features that make Rico the leader in the industry. Thanks. Find Rico copiers at Applied Graphics, serving Vermont and New York. Rico copiers, we respond. I'm E.G. Marshall. I've played many different roles in my career, in the theater, movies, television, radio. You know, an actor has to be versatile, be able to perform in a variety of situations. And versatility is a hallmark of Albany Savings Bank as well. Whatever services you need, now accounts, savings bank life insurance, high interest savings, retirement programs, Albany Savings Bank gets star billing. They're the savings people bank. 
committed to you. Steel is cutting the cost of cutting brush and weeds. Now get an accessory kit worth up to $47 free when you buy a steel brush cutter this spring. Plays for weeds and grass with a brush cutter so strong, it makes cutting even thick brush a snap. So well made, it's ready to last twice as long as the competition. So get a steel brush cutter, and for a limited time, get a free accessory kit from Steel, makers of the world's largest selling chainsaw. Now at the following steel dealers. Midland Equipment, Peru Farm Center, David Whitty. This is Channel 5, WPTZ, Plattsburgh, North Pole, Burlington. And the last inning by Bittner. Now watch the follow through this time. Look, he's leaning forward, bouncing, uh, bouncing forward in position. And Seaver of old on that strikeout, one of six men with 3,000 career strikeouts. Make that seven. Excuse me, Ferguson Jenkins, and congratulations in joining the club this past week. A great right-hander Jenkins became the seventh man in history to strike out 3,000 or more. Johnny Bench late on a fastball from Rogers. It'll be Bench, O'Berry, and Seaver in the Cincinnati third. No score. Bench a story this week. Admitting that he was lethargic, he didn't have the drive, he felt tired, listless. He has a cyst in the nasal passage and it's affected his breathing. He finally received medication this week. John said that it, it has helped him and he feels better. He said, this is just totally unlike me. I've been competitive, fired up, eager all my life and suddenly it's just as if somebody's drained all the energy out of me. But with the backup third baseman, Wayne Krenschicki, suffering the uh, fractured thumb, no place for Johnny to go except to his position in the field. A 241 average and only three home runs. The Reds desperately need for him to get the long ball. I mentioned Krenschicki. When they got him from the Baltimore organization, the only available picture of Krenschicki for their media guide had him with a mustache. Of course, the conservative Reds management frowns upon that. And so they airbrushed the mustache off Krenschicki's face in the picture, and now it looks like a six-year-old kid with a milk mustache after he's <laughs> thrown a little of that uh, milk down. Hey, you can't, can't fight the system in Cincinnati. <laughs> Full count now to bench. And a base hit to right field. The second Cincinnati hit. On his way to the Hall of Fame. Oh, what a man he has been for the game. Mike Ten gold gloves for him. Yeah. Every year between 68 and 77. People, it's so easy to forget some of the concerns of this man through the years. How about that operation where he was fearful of cancer, a chest benign tumor a few years ago? Even last year when he hit 309, he had a broken ankle. And unfortunately, was hitting around 350 at the time he snapped the ankle in the first half of the year. Spire has company uh, beneath the Mendoza line here with Mike O'Berry, Dick. <laughs> uh, the Costas line is at work again. And ladies and gentlemen, stay with us here. French Canada, this man Costas has been in his hotel room studying his high school friends all last night to the wee hours, wee, wee hours. <laughs> <laughs> Fouled out of play. <laughs> all right, here's Rogers examining the ball, trying to get the feel. And see, right, see, he gets that middle finger on the seam. That's where they, he gets the leverage to snap the sinker of the breaking ball. The middle finger finding a high point on the seam. Count one and two. I'm still working on my English. I was studying hard all last night as well. So I'm anxious to hear some of the phrases that you'll be helping us with as we understand the game bilingually today from Montreal. Took a little off the breaking pitch, and O'Berry is the third strikeout victim of Rogers. There are the strikeout leaders in the National League this year. Soto, the Reds, size believed over Steve Carlton. Some of you will see Carlton in our second game of the doubleheader today against Atlanta. Rogers in the third spot. 
hard to imagine looking at Rogers that he's never won more than 17 games in a season that happened back in 1977 and in fact only recently went over 500 for his career it seemed like if there was any pitcher in the majors who was always losing tough luck low run games it was him hit and run as Seaver singles to right and bench will go to third base how do you do Saver executes the hit and run, just drives it through the right side and bench at third with one away. Seaver has always been a good hitter, occasional home run power. And talk about doing your job exactly as it was designed. There's the hole with Oliver holding bench on at first. Seaver slaps it through, but Cromarty made this play reasonably close with a quick pickup and throw from right field. Here's bench making his turn, and he doesn't cut it as close as he might have, but he got in there safely. And you saw that the first baseman, Oliver, expecting the bunt, he was charging toward the plate, so that opened up the right side all the more, and Seaver took advantage. So the Reds with a chance to score. Top of the third inning, runners at the corners, the former battery of Seaver and Bench, and Milner, who lined to short the batter. One and oh. Upstairs 2 and 0. Oh. You saw Milner's low batting average against the Expos, but he has company. Montreal is 4 and 0 oh this year against the Reds. Shut him out once and held him to two runs the other three times. There are going to be a lot of lean averages against this Expo staff this season. Here's the hitter's pitch 2 and 0. Oh. Hits it to Dawson. That won't get the run in. And Bench is forced to hold at third. Rather nonchalant cutoff attempt by Cromarty, stand rather by Oliver, standing at the pitcher's mound, and that ball almost got away. It skipped up in the air. Oliver, as great a hitter as he has been through the years, is not a defensive stalwart, and he has had some problems uh, defensively at first base this year for Montreal. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is Channel 5, WPTZ, Plattsburgh, North Pole, Burlington. Dick Henberg, Bob Costas in Montreal. The first of our doubleheader on NBC today. No score, top of the third inning. The Reds with the first serious chance, but Milner unable to get the run in from third on a fly ball. Now two away, bench at third, Seaver at first. Ron Oster, the batter, he struck out swinging his first time, facing the ace right-hander of Montreal, Steve Rutgers. And Oster until last night did not have a hit against the Expos but hit a two run home run. Fouled away from the left side Oster at 269 this year been a better hitter right handed at 292. Isn't it curious Dick how some pitchers follow their custom no matter what. It's hot enough here and muggy enough in Montreal for us to have taken off our sport coats rolled up our sleeves and here's Seaver on at first wearing the warm up jacket beneath his uniform and sweatshirt off speed again that's how he struck out Oster the first time around it's one and two there's a purpose pitch as he drives Oster off the plate two balls two strikes two out bench at third Seaver at first, top of the third. No score in Montreal. I believe I said a moment ago wearing the jacket beneath his uniform, which would be quite a trick. Obviously, it's over. There's that off-speed breaking ball, and Oster chased a bad pitch. Rogers works out of the third with a couple of key strikeouts. No runs, two hits, and two left. Middle of the third, no score. Nobody protects you like the cavalry can, the Kemper Cavalry. We're the outfit that has first accident forgiveness in auto insurance. We pioneered full replacement value in homeowner's insurance. Call out the cavalry. Once you compare Kemper, you'll ride with us. And watch me, Craig Stadler, along with Nicholas Weiskopf and other top pros at the Kemper Open, live from Congressional, June 5th and 6th. 
17 hours. That's how long it took us to paint this house with the brush. Then we painted it in just six and a half hours with the Wagner Power Painter. This wicker chair took over an hour, but less than five minutes with a Wagner Power Painter. A shutter that took 20 minutes, a power painter finished in only three. It's a tool so versatile, it has a flexible spray tip and a way to draw paint right from a can. A Wagner Power Painter. It's the right tool for painting. You will find many things in the Arizona desert. What you will not find is mercy. This is where Ford tested the acceleration of Mustang GT against Camaro Z28. Mustang GT's 5-liter high-output engine and performance suspension blew Camaro right into the shadows in 7.3 seconds. And Mustang GT became the dominant species. From a place where few survive, the boss is back. Don't miss the very best in baseball. The Giants slide into Chicago to try to catch the Red Hot Cubbies. Or the Mariners sail east to tangle with the Tigers on NBC Sports next Saturday. Olympic Stadium. Nearly a billion dollar bust here in Montreal. The problems continue. They have the roof shipped from France down in the basement. And they still thought about covering this stadium after some $700 million already. Steve Rogers, Tim Raines, Terry Francona in the Montreal third. No score. Tom Seaver has allowed a single and a double in the first two innings. Yeah. Fouled out of play. Tom Seaver, and one of the things he's doing to try to keep from opening up too soon. Watch the front foot, the left foot as he plants it, rather than it being aimed at the hitter. And we got more, that's the push-off foot. We'll check the front foot later. He's aiming that front foot toward the third baseline to try to keep his body in. And when a man is opening too soon, it'll be straying. That front foot will stray toward the first baseline. One and two. Seaver, his third strikeout. Interesting test for Seaver as he works against the bottom of the order. The people he should be overpowering, the Slyers and the Rogers, he has overpowered. He's been overpowering in his career as a winning pitcher, Tom Seaver. Talk about the Hall of Fame. They've got a spot reserved for this right-hander. Here's that front foot. Now, see, the, well, from that angle, stuff, you can see the left foot is pointed more toward third, and then on the follow-through, he comes and straightens away. That's one of the little things he's trying to do to get himself back in a good pitching groove. Tim Raines fly deep to center in the first inning. The Raines stolen base total at 15. He's been caught four times, and of course, that's way behind the pace of people like Ricky Henderson and Bob Dernier. But part of the problem has been all the different people batting behind him. They used six or seven different number two hitters before finally settling on Tito Francona's son, Terry, the young left fielder. And we'll talk about that. It's a very unusual position for a young hitter. Francona just a couple of years out of college. Batting behind a premier base fielder. And Jim Gilliam did it so well for Maury Wills with the Dodgers. Ted Sizemore hitting second behind Lou Brock. It's usually a spot reserved for a veteran experienced hitter who's willing to take a lot of strikes, willing to go behind 0-2 to help that base dealer. 2-2 two two the count. Through 42 games in 1981, Reigns had stolen 40 bases. 15 steals this year in 42 games. And he's hitting a 299 starting today. So he's been on base. Not this time. Greason takes it himself. Two out. Francona the hitter. Now let's look at Seaver on this delivery. And as any good pitcher should, ball hit to his left side. He's over there to cover first if needed. That seems so fundamental, and yet so frequently you see pitchers fail to do it or it dawns on them a bit too late, opens the gates for a big inning. Especially with Reigns. Oh, look at that one from Seaver. But Francona really waited on this changeup. He hissed his swing, wasn't fooled, and then leveled on it. 
That's almost a semi blooper from Seaver. He really lollipopped it up there. Look at it again. But watch Francona's reaction, Nick. Here it comes. Almost like the old Steve Hamilton folly floater. Or La Lave, which is thrown more recently by Dave LaRoche of the Yankees. Not quite the Rip Sewell Epis ball of days gone by, but an extreme changeup, and Francona waited on it masterfully and lined it up the middle. Francona with a smile, and that's not exactly where Seaver wanted the pitch, but he's at least shown it. It's something to give the hitters to digest for the rest of the game. Andre Dawson, Baltimore chop single in the first. Flies it, foul, back of first. Greason has a play. A pop-up, or as they say in Montreal, the Bibi Chantel. Let's run that by me again. La Bibi Chantel. Oh, and I love you too. And after three, there's no score in Montreal. <laughs> There is just one place where you can go from high school to flight school. The Army. Today's Army has more pilots than the largest airline. Not bad for a rookie. Five years ago, a team of Honda engineers set out to create the world's most advanced motorcycle. The result of their efforts is the Honda CX500 Turbo, a water-cooled, fuel-injected, turbocharged motorcycle systematically controlled by a digital computer. The CX500 Turbo. The only thing about it that is not surprising is the name of the company that built it. I tell you, with girls, I never had any luck, you know. Well, I used to call information just to get a woman to talk to me. You live around here? <laughs> then I found light beer for Miller. The light's less filling and it really tastes great. Now, I tell you, since I discovered light beer, women are always talking to me, you know. Hi. You come here often? Get lost. See what I mean? Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. I tell you, she's crazy about me. Tuesday. Maverick's big con to save the town gets a little out of hand. It was part of your plan to keep Sweetwater standing, wasn't it? If it didn't look real, it wouldn't work. Last night in the American League, the Angels got a home run in the eighth from Baylor to move into first place. Toronto Baltimore rained out. Cleveland beat Chicago 5-2. to two. The Indians have won five in a row. Let's go on to the business here in Montreal. Top of the fourth inning. Getting the rest of the scores. And the action here is Bob Costas. Dennis Eckersley was the winner in that Boston victory over Seattle. And in the Yankee win against Minnesota, Gossage beat his old relief buddy Davis. Dave Concepcion to be followed by Dan Dreesen and Cesar Cedeno, the heart of the Reds' order. Their batting averages are very respectable indeed, but their home run and RBI totals are not what John McNamara had hoped for at this stage of the season. And Rogers throws the changeup, which Concepcion fouls off. They said this guy was skating on thin ice before they won six straight on that road trip. Jim Fanning had been a front office man, hadn't been in uniform in almost 20 years before they brought him back to replace Dick Williams last September. Concepcion. Green's making the play. But then he throws high. Carter backing it up. Prevents any further advance. Boy, an alert play by Carter backing it up. And Concepcion took a turn towards second. Had Oliver been alert, it appeared that the first base umpire, Davidson, would have called Concepcion out on the tag. Throwing error by Reigns after making the brilliant stop. Here it is again. Watch Carter. Perfect position. Now, Concepcion, does he take the turn towards second? Well, our camera doesn't follow it, but Carter alertly had that ball right back to Oliver. And you see Concepcion, he knew he was in trouble. He made the dive back to the bag. Something you saw in that throw by Reigns, he threw it over the top like an outfielder instead of the more sidearm motion that an infielder usually uses. Steve Burrows, one of the Expo coaches, has been working with Reigns, trying to get him acclimated. Concepcion going. And here's the throw into center field by Carter, but Concepcion will go no further. 
So no error on the play and just credit a stolen base for Concepcion as Dreesen swung at a bad pitch to try and protect it. And for Dave Concepcion, the stolen base, he had a terrific jump. I'm not sure that uh, Carter would have gotten him with a perfect throw. Fourth stolen base this year for Concepcion. So he's in scoring position with nobody out. Last inning, Reds had runners at the corners with one down and got nothing out of it. Let's see if Dreesen can pull the ball now to get Concepcion to third. Dreesen came in hitting 305 with five homers and 21 ribbies. Trying to pull it. Now he's behind on the count 0-2 and, and will have to protect the plate. A lot of lineup changes for the Reds this year. Bench out from behind the plate to third. Trevino acquired in the Foster deal back of the plate. An entirely new outfield. Only Concepcion at short, Oster at second, and Dreesen at first. Just three regulars return in the same spot as they played in 1981. And you Pick have off a, play. You have a good stand on that too. The, the six men at a different position than last year. The Reds had the best record overall in the National League. And what was that? The, no team has won a division title or a pennant of any kind in the major leagues returning as few as three regulars from the year before since 1946. And that of course was after the war. Now let's see if Concepcion wants to tag. So Marty makes a running catch. Billy Mays fashion that wound up too shallow. So Concepcion holds it second with one out. We'll be back with Cesar Cedeno's at bat but first let's check with Byron Day in New York. Bob, the Indians are in the middle of a big inning. Rick Manning singles off the glove of Tom Pachork. That's scored Vaughn Hayes in second base. They now lead it two to nothing, and they're not out of the inning yet. They're really rubbing up Lamar Hoyt in Cleveland. So Lamar Hoyt, who came into that game with a record of 9-0, and Sports Illustrated headlined a story about him this week saying, it's a heady Lamar in Chicago. And a hairy one. He's not going to shave or get his hair cut until that streak is broken. 14 consecutive wins, three off the American League record, but in trouble today. Cedeno taps one toward third, and Wallach comes in and makes the play. And again, no advance by Concepcion. It has to be said because so many people in baseball are talking about it, and pitchers in the National League, they feel that George Foster's absence from this Cincinnati Red lineup is the one biggest difference. They feel now the lineup can be pitched to with fastballs. But when Foster was there, just his presence, you knew he was coming up, made it a different game. And uh, the Reds desperately need that one swing, three runs that Foster gave them, or at least the threat thereof. They don't have it this year and have not shown it. Of course, up to this point, Foster with the Mets and Griffey and Collins with the Yankees, all former Reds, they have all struggled. Bittner lashes one into left field, but Francona has a beat on it and runs it down. So Concepcion with an infield hit and a stolen base, but he's stranded at second as Dreesen, Cedeno, and Bittner couldn't bring him home. We've gone through three and a half in Montreal. No score. Wherever you live, whatever you need to trim, Home Light string trimmers give you that finishing touch. Because after Home Light gives you quality, Home Light gives you a choice with lightweight electrics and powerful gasoline trimmers, all with automatic string advance. We've got trimmers that turn into blowers and trimmers that become brush cutters. There's even a trimmer you can operate with one hand. So whatever you need to trim, wherever you need to trim it, get a Home Light string trimmer for the finishing touch. I do one thing, I race to win. And at 250 miles per hour, I have to concentrate on being the best. Just like Kentucky Fried Chicken, they concentrate on chicken, cooked up fresh to split-second timing with the Colonel's special touch. That's how Kentucky Fried Chicken got to be number one. And it tastes so good. It's the only time Mom's never in a hurry to finish first. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. Millions of people have discovered a low-cost alternative to car care, where qualified mechanics do quality work. They discovered K-Care, found only at Kmart. When you can get a quality brake job for $98, not just the front, but both front disc and rear drum, that's some value. Well, that's what the K-Care Brake Special is all about. For only $98, we'll do a front and rear brake job using Ray Bestus Manhattan quality parts. At that price, why do it yourself? That's K-Care, only at Kmart. 
This firing day in New York. In Cleveland, the Indians are still batting. Alan Bannister staying with singles to left. That scores Rick Manning and Ron Hassey while Bannister takes second. It's now 4-0, Cleveland, bottom of the second. Jim Fanning involved in a bit of a ruckus a while back with Bill Lee. Volatile left-hander walked out on the ball club after they cut his buddy Rodney Scott. Here's Al Oliver cutting on the first pitch and lining it into center field for a base hit. Milner comes over and cuts it off. And a wide turn by Oliver who holds with a single. So Bill Lee takes a hike because they waved Rodney Scott, went across the street, had a few pops at a local tavern, returned in about the eighth inning. The Expo said we've seen enough and they let uh, Bill Lee go as well. And what's he doing now Dick Enberg? He's playing softball. He's on a softball uh, team playing second base a left handed uh, throwing second baseman perhaps in memory of his uh, buddy uh, Scott out in one of the Montreal suburbs. So the spaceman is still in the area. One of those two hits by Carter against the Reds was a long home run last night. They walked him three times. He homered in his other trips so he never had to run hard. Oliver bidding for his seventh consecutive 300 season is at first base with a leadoff single. Cromarty will follow Carter. Last half of the fourth, Seaver tries to hit the corner inside and misses. Al Oliver has hit over 300 eight times all told in his career. Insists, however, that he should have a higher lifetime average. Insists that more line drives off his bat are caught than any other player. I don't know if that's paranoia oh, or what? Oh, oh, you take it into the court of law, and there'd be about 500 men right there with him claiming the same thing. They all remember the line drives that are caught. Get on the ground to bench for the second time. Can they turn two? Oster won't even throw. Oliver with the potential takeout slide. So they get the force as Carter grounds to bench for the second straight time. The erudite pitching master, Tom Seaver. Also left us with an important message, and I think we ought to check in on that now. Here's Mr. Tom. All right, Mr. Enberg, I'll be able to do this if you keep your hands off of me. This is the disclaimer. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. And that was on the first take, big boy. Give it to me. <laughs> Crow Marty is the hitter. That goes uh, back to our playoff experience where we let Tom read one and he got about two lines into it and had trouble laughing. I can't recall what his problem was. So he's been practicing. Romarty flied out his first trip. Strike call says plate umpire Dave Pallone. We mentioned in the last inning all the Reds lineup changes and the fact that no team returning as few as three regulars has won a pennant since 1946, the first year after the war. Both the Red Sox and Cardinals did it that year. Romarty fouling it away. Here's an amazing statistic on Tom Seaver. He's got the 520 victory seasons, the three Cy Young Awards, but look at this one. This one was unearthed by our statistician Steve Horn. This is the difference between Tom Seaver's lifetime winning percentage and the winning percentages of the teams he has played for. As Cromarty fouls another one off. And it's not even close. Seaver is the all time leader in this department, the great Grover Alexander, played by our president in the movies. Walter Johnson and Lefty Grove next on the list. To give you an idea of how he ranks against some contemporary, Sandy Koufax was a plus 88, 655 lifetime, while his Dodger teams were 567. Jim Palmer is a plus 53. Steve Carlton, a plus 65. That is an amazing stat. 130 percentage points better than his team's average. Tom Seaver. Cromarty fouls it straight back. O'Berry off with the mask and no play. I wonder if we could go back to that graphic again because I, I just uh, there's so much information there and Bob maybe I could just say it in a little different way because I, we get into statistics so often they're important and, and confusing. Basically what that statistic says that Tom Seaver one of the great winning pitchers in the history of the game but the greatest in terms of his teams you see the far right hand column that was the record of the team winning record while he was pitching there so Tom basically pitching with teams that were just a bit above 500 his early year with the Mets and yet had the be best record differential record. Well, Marty 
pops this one up and bench will have a play in foul ground for the second out. Yeah, that's the real definition of a stopper, a guy that doesn't matter who you're pitching for. When you wheel him out to the mound, you expect a victory, and that's exactly what Tom Seaver has given the Reds and the Mets through the years. Put it in a different perspective. Remember the great year Steve Carlton had with a woeful Philly team in 1972. Steve was 27 and 10, a percentage of 730, while the team was 59 and 97, a percentage of 378. So that put Carlton plus 352 on his differential between what he did and his otherwise hapless ball club did. That was an amazing season for Carlton. That's where the team goes in the bus and Carlton takes the limo. <laughs> Oliver is the runner. Check it, Carter the runner at first. He forced Oliver after Oliver led the inning with a single. Wallach, who doubled against Saber his first time, swings and misses, and the count even at one and one. Two out, Carter at first, last half of the fourth, and no score in Montreal. Saber missing up and in, it's two and one. Bob, a reminder that we'll be picking our most valuable player. Announce that later in the game. And the respective pitchers. Rogers and Seaver making their bids at least in the early innings for that honor. There are some mosquitoes or some bugs that are flying around and they bothered a couple of the hitters and now apparently they bothered Seaver as well and he stepped off and was waving at the air. You see how he get look at that back foot look at all the mud and dirt on that right instep he really gets down and drags that foot. It fouled by Wallach the count two and two. That's always been the case with Seaver. After a game you look at the bottom of those uniform socks on the pant leg always messed up. If he's in his right groove he's going to drag that leg. Driving toward the plate. Wallach hits it in the air to center field, and Cedeno almost in his tracks makes the catch for the third out. A leadoff single by Oliver, but no further advance. And at the end of four in Montreal, the Reds and Expos remain scoreless, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. On NBC Magazine, to have a child with birth defects or to have an abortion, lab tests give parents the terrible choice. Then meet a man who makes millions from pizza Saturday. New England Video is proud to announce the grand opening of their newest store in the Adirondack Mall, Plattsburgh. We offer a full line of Sony video products, like this new Sony front-loading Betamax and the new Sony portable video recorder that weighs only eight and three-quarter pounds. New England Video also carries Sony video cassette tapes for your home recordings. And don't forget, we're the area's largest dealer of pre-recorded movies. For all your video needs, see the friendly staff at New England Video, now in the Adirondack Mall, Plattsburgh. If your car runs fine on the highway, but stalls and misfires around town, try the plug with a wide heat range. Autolite. Main and Auto Supply carries a complete line of Fram Autolite products, as well as mufflers, shocks, brakes, tuna parts and equipment. So if you're going to do it yourself, come to Main and Auto Supply, the parts people. Quality parts, professional service. So, quit stalling. Get Autolite. See the professionals at a Main and Auto Supply near you. This is Channel 5, WPTZ, Plattsburgh, North Pole, Burlington. On that last homestand, the Expos were 4-10, and ten, then hit the road and won six straight times and kept it going last night with the 4-2 win behind Scott Sanderson to make it seven in a row. And perhaps Jim Fanning was right. This was the team that was expected to win, thought by many to be not only the best team in their division, but perhaps baseball's emerging team of the 80s. But they were slow getting out of the gate. Right now, they trail the Cardinals by four in the National League East. They're a half game back of the second place Mets, who are three and a half off the pace set by St. Lou. In the West, it's Atlanta by three and a half over San Diego, five over the Dodgers, eight over Houston. San Francisco, eight and a half behind, and the Reds are in the basement at 18 and 26, nine off the pace. American League East, Red Sox by two over Detroit, six over the Yankees, who are playing better now. Yankees have won seven of their last eight. Johnny Bench leads it off. He singled his first time up, and the change misses outside from Rodgers. American League West, 
California in front by half a game over Chicago, five and a half over Kansas City. On the corner, one and one. Bench will be followed by O'Berry and then Seaver. A couple of weeks ago, we had the Reds on our game of the week. They fell behind 12-0 at Pittsburgh, rallied back before losing 12-9. Wallach has to come in quickly and throw, and he gets Johnny Bay. Unlike Tim Raines, who has had some problems shifting in midseason from the outfield to second base, Wallach has looked like a natural at third base since the start of the season. There was a case where the carpet took a potential hit away on grass that ball would have died been very difficult for Wallach to come in and field and throw but with a high bounce off the artificial surface it was a relatively easy play. Steve Boros was telling us before the game they've been working with Wallach trying to get him to keep the bare hand closer to the glove when he fields a ball. It's his tendency from having played a lot of first base and some outfield to scoop the ball especially around first base with one hand. But when you have to get rid of it quickly, you need that bare hand close to the glove so you don't waste a precious split second moving it into the mitt to remove it and throw. O'Berry struck out swinging his first time. He's ahead on the count now, 2 0. Oh. Rogers does not walk many, averaging just over two free passes a game this year. One of the best control artists in baseball. Lined up the middle by O'Berry. Oh, that's news. Raise the flag. O'Berry, six hits in 31 at bats on the year for that single. Ah, but it still leaves him just a fraction beneath the, the Mendoza, Mendoza line. line. That's right. <laughs> six for 30 would lift him right to that threaded line at 200, right? So six for 31, he's got to be at 198 or something. Here's Seaver out a hit and run single to right his first time up. They charge expecting the bunt. Tom squares but doesn't offer. Say what you will about the advantages of the designated hitter. And the one big one is that it keeps a fan favorite like a Yastrzemski or a Willie Horton and Al Kaline. Keeps him around for the fans to see and that is a big plus. But otherwise I see all the pluses with allowing the hitter to bat because it gives you so many things to talk about. Will Seaver successfully sacrifice? Is he a better bunter than Rogers? If he gets on base, how well does he run the bases? Do you pinch hit for him or don't you? Do you pitch around the eighth hitter or don't you? And if he's just knocked someone down, do you try to knock him down? I don't think it's any accident that there have been more beanball wars in the American League of late than in the National League because the pitchers don't have to stand up and face retaliation. Seaver gets it down nicely. Oliver guns it over to Reigns for the out with O'Berry advancing. So now Eddie Milner will have a chance with two out to knock him in. But first, let's check with Byron Day. Okay, Bob, up in Minnesota, the Yankees had something going in the top half of the first inning. But this strikeout by John May Mayberry turned into a double play as Launder threw a grippy, nothing, nothing. Now the bottom of the first. Right fielder Eddie Milner has lined out and popped out, has an RBI chance with two gone in the top half of the fifth and a scoreless ball game. When you think about it, Dick, all the big beanball wars and the brawls in recent years, they seem to have been, with very few exceptions, in the American League, where the pitchers do not have to bat. I guess the exploits of Dickie Knowles over in the National League would be an exception, but by and large, it's the American League where they've had those problems. It makes it a different game. Oh, and one on Milner. Slap foul, 0-2. O'Berry, the runner at second base, obviously without blinding speed. You look around the outfield. Cromarty with a decent arm in right. Dawson with a cannon in center. I have not seen Francona play the outfield enough to really have an opinion on him. So-so, says Dick Enberg with a that's, wave of the that's, hand. That's why he's in left field. And he'll have a chance to play this one. A mild red threat goes by the board. No runs, a hit, an advancing bunt, but a runner is left. At the end of four and a half at Olympic Stadium in Montreal, Rogers and Seaver are locked in a scoreless duel. Your father gave it to you for your fifth birthday. Now it's your turn to pass it on. Any spray paint could make it red again. 
But Rust-Oleum, with an average of 50% more protective ingredients than its nearest competitor, can do more. Its protective formula not only prevents rust, but gives metal better protection against chipping and peeling. So if what you're painting isn't ordinary, why should your paint be? Rust-Oleum. Any metal worth painting is worth protecting. Now, Ford blasts through truck prices with $1,000 back, 100% from Ford on tough Broncos, and $2,000 back on XLT club wagons and $500 on vans. There are big price breaks, $500 to $750 on most Ford pickups and 4x4s, and $1,000 on tough Ford mediums. So get the jump on truck prices and get up to $2,000 back, 100% from Ford. It's big. It's now. Gillette Foamy, thick and rich enough to restrain this rushing roller coaster? No. Is Foamy thick and rich enough to support this lovely lady? No. Is Foamy thick and rich enough to hold up this husky hiker? <laughs> no. But if you want a clean, close shave, it's more than thick and rich enough. The Crown Jewel, Wimbledon. From opening serve to closing volley, NBC Sports will bring you expanded coverage, including the men's and women's finals live. It's the most prestigious event in tennis. Please join us. And reigns in the Expo fifth, and here's the play Chris Spire made on the game's first hitter, Eddie Milner, a rising liner. And Spire has half of it in the glove and half protruding for the first out of the game. A reminder fans stay tuned second half of the doubleheader some of you will see the Milwaukee Brewers against the Angels Reggie Jackson and company they're in first place in the American League West others of you will visit in on the Atlanta Philadelphia game from Veterans Stadium Philadelphia swing and a miss by Spire as Seaver took just a little bit off Tom has allowed one hit in each of the first four frames he was bombed his last time out at Riverfront against the Phillies and he's been bombed plenty to be honest this year came in with an ERA of 6.86 and a record of one and six and here's a man lifetime lifetime ERA 2.65 he's been over three only three times in 15 years so at those numbers this season are just phenomenal for Seaver. and only a few months removed from a 14 and two season this is through the hole for Spire and a leadoff single. In fact, the fall off receiver is all the more dramatic when you consider the fact that many knowledgeable baseball observers felt that he, rather than Fernando Valenzuela, deserved the Cy Young Award last year. Well, he was a model of consistency, 7-1 in the first half, 7-1 in the second half of the season, 7-1 at home, 7-1 on the road. 7-1 against the East, 7-1 against the West. Rogers in a sacrifice situation just like Seaver faced the last inning. He said uh, to me last night, he said, you're working with Bob Costas. I said, yes. He said, oh, that's too bad. He said, I've probably been available after the second inning. <laughs> <laughs> Not so today. Rogers bunts foul, a ball and a strike. Tim Raines and then perhaps Terry Francona await a chance to break the scoreless tie. Seaver has called time and calling Concepcion in from shortstop. Dick, how about the old red teammate of these fellows, Pete Rose? This past week went past 500 consecutive games played. It's the second streak in his career of 500 or more. Now, guys like Garrick, Billy Williams, Musial, Garvey, they've had longer individual streaks, but only two players in history have had two streaks of 500. Rogers now behind on the count, one and two. Only Charlie Geringer, before Charlie Hustle, Pete Rose, had done that twice, 500 consecutive games. I thought you were going to say Mario Mendoza. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you uh, have a lifetime batting average that's around 200, you're not going to get a chance to play in five straight games, let alone 500 straight. Still trying to bunt and a strikeout victim. 
So just as we were discussing last inning, there's an illustration of why the designated hitter rule might not be so appealing. One pitcher bought it successfully, another didn't. Here's Byron Day. Bob P. Guerrero has got his 33rd RBI. He scored George Order with the Dodgers' first run. They now lead the Chicago Cubs one to nothing. Now in the bottom of the first at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Bob. Thanks, Byron. We're up to the top of the order, and Tim Raines is the hitter. He's 0 for 2. He flied the center, and he grounded to Dreesen at first unassisted. Came into the game hitting 299. Let's go back to Charlie Geringer because you just can't rub past that name, a Hall of Famer, and all of the old timers that recall the great second baseman of the Tigers who performed at Thin Brick Stadium. They all said basically the same thing about Geringer. A field, everything looked easy. He never made a play difficult. He was a marvelous all-around athlete. Ranks with Hornsby and Frisch, Eddie Collins, among the greatest in the game's history at the Keystone. Spire is at first with one out. Reigns is the hitter and Francona is on deck. And Tim Reigns steps out. Working with this youngster, trying to get him adjusted to playing second base, where he exposes those million dollar legs to take out slides on the DP pivot. A ball and two strikes. Well, he's not afraid to get hit. He was a great high school football star, tailback. But uh, nevertheless, it. Uh, you get yourself in awkward position at second on those close double play pivots. They say he moves well to his left, but has trouble backhanding the ball hit to his right. A check swing foul, the count holds. Boros explained that the backhand play is an unnatural motion. Usually you're used to raising the glove up, whereas on the backhand play you have to bring it down. And the question for an inexperienced second baseman when to try to get in front, when to go for the backhand play. So those movements to his right have been a problem for Reigns, while fielding balls hit to his left have posed no difficulty. Inside two and two and a quick throw to first by O'Berry, but Spires scampers back. As an illustration of how it took Reigns a while to get comfortable at second, the Expos did not turn a single double play in the first 12 games that Reigns played at second. Here's O'Berry snapping one over to Dreesen, but Spire is able to get back safely with room to spare. 2 2 pitch. Full count. Well, that was interesting. You saw the catcher, O'Berry, set up outside, and then Seaver came in tight with a fastball. Either he missed that much, or that was just a decoy range to get him to think outside and try to bust the ball in inside. See, O'Berry's in the outside, setting up, and then the pitch right under the elbow of Reigns. I would guess that Spire would be moving on the 3-2 pitch, and he is. Reigns with a half-hearted swing. He's a strikeout victim, and this is a double play as O'Berry guns Spire down at second base. So Spire with a leadoff hit. He is erased, however, on the strikeout throw him out situation. Seaver fans two in the inning. He's looking sharp. We're scoreless after five. Wherever men race to win, Champions Park Club will be there. You can be a winner, too. You can win a free trip to the Caesars Palace Grand Prix, Las Vegas. And you can find out if you're a winner by looking for the contest ad in these issues of Popular Mechanics, TV Guide, or Reader's Digest. Remove the coded instant winner card. Take it wherever you see this sign. Do it today. Win with Champion, the spark plug that wins the world over. I pushed a lot of ships around this harbor. I haven't lost one yet. When you finally get them on your own, that's when you realize how thirsty you are and how good a cold beer is going to taste. That's it, guys. It's Miller time. Miller time. Time for America's quality ah, beer. Home again. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, ah, Miller's, for my Miller's got the beer. Save on your homeowner's insurance with a fire extinguisher, a smoke alarm, and deadbolt locks. Check with State Farm. I'm State Farm agent John Pomeroy. With State Farm, you'll save 5% on your homeowner's insurance if you just install a fire extinguisher, a smoke alarm, and deadbolt door locks like I have. Put in additional security equipment, and you get an even bigger discount. And our Home Alert program could save you a lot more than just money. 
Check with State Farm. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Powerful women attack the bar and assault the record books. Plus, exciting martial artists drive flesh and bone through solid material. And the men's Chudichi Cup gymnastics from Japan. On NBC Sports World. Tomorrow. One of the outstanding baseball people, the skipper of the Montreal Expos, Jim Fanning. Dugout, lineup card behind him. Now, they're interesting to look at. They're all basically the same form. But the, those of you who will see the Angels game against the Brewers following this one, you'll see the man with the best handwriting in baseball, Gene Mock. Now, not that there's anything wrong with Fanning, a well-educated. He has his master's degree from the University of Illinois. He's got good penmanship. But I got to give the vote to Mock. If you see his lineup card in their second game today, uh, he could have won an award. It's almost the kind of uh, penmanship you'd want to address a special invitation to the president, Mr. Mock. Let us hope that for the first time in his career, for Mock's sake, that he can send out World Series invitations. All those flirtations with pennants, but never winning one. I know one man pulling very hard for just that result, and that's the. Uh, Chairman of the board, Gene Autry. You spent many years with the Cowboy out there broadcasting Angels games, didn't you? And uh, there's a man I think all of baseball pulling for. Oster, who has struck out twice, now hits it to Reigns at second base. And again, a high throw that pulls Oliver off the bag, but he gets down in time. Perhaps we can get a replay of the throwing motion of Tim Reigns. Steve Burrows working with him saying that he has a lazy motion sometimes taking too many steps before releasing and kind of a lollipop throw and there it is you saw he kind of half a cross between an overhand throw and a sidearm toss and sort of pushed it over there now, he, that's exactly the call he pushed the ball rather than snapping a throw it's just a it's a wrist snap from second base and he, he's he's just picking uh, his way and obvious too that he was thinking about it as he did it which is never the best thing you want to be able to do it instinctively Dawson goes almost to straightaway right field to take it and that's what you want your center fielder to do anything he can reach belongs to him except the own flies out for the second out AC Seaver is knee already soiled as he drives toward the plate there's a good straightaway follow through now here's Steve Rogers follow through see he's perfectly clean he stays up more drags that right foot a bit. That's why they have the toe plate because many pitchers wheel that toe sharply on the ground as they follow through. Treason has struck out and flat out and takes a strike. Each pitcher has fanned five. Seaver has allowed five hits, one in each frame. Rogers, as he works here in the top of the sixth, has yielded four hits. Now we're seeing two of the great pitchers in the National League at work against each other. Seaver, perhaps his best start of this season. A troubled year at that, and Rogers continuing his superb pitching. That's a bullet, but foul, and a nice play by the ball boy down the line. Ball girls may be more attractive, but not many would have gotten in front of a hot shot like that one perhaps says something for their intelligence as opposed to this young man. He played that neatly. Dreesen with two out and nobody on. It's a foul the other way. Whoop, that's too tough for his counterpart down the left field line. The youngster could not feel that one. Now that's down in that area is where Bruce Jenner crossed the finish line. 1500 meters to win the gold medal in the decathlon in 1976. Change up is hit weakly to Reigns at second. Handles it without difficulty. It's a 1 2 3 inning for Rogers in the top half of the sixth. And at the end of five and a half, it's 0 4 and 0 for the Reds and 0 5 and 1 for the Expos. And we'll be back with Francona, Dawson, and Oliver after this. If you're looking for your first bike, we'd like to show you something. A five-speed transmission, front disc brake, and a red line at 10,500 RPM. What do you think it would cost? $800? A thousand? $1,200? No. This is the Honda MB5. Five speeds, 10,500 RPM, 
for $598. Professionals like Yvonne Lendl use Bengay, not only after exercise, but to help warm up before. Does using Bengay during warm-up really help? A recent clinical study proved when healthy adults used Bengay during warm-up, they ran more comfortably for a longer time. For years, there's been proof Bengay helps relieve soreness after exercise for hours. Now there's proof Bengay can help you warm up before. Bengay after and Bengay before. Feel better with Bengay. America, let's turn it to gold. Recycling can turn aluminum into gold because you get cash. And during June, Alcoa will give a penny a pound to the 1984 U.S. Olympic team. So pick up your favorite beverages in aluminum cans and turn them into gold. Just call for the recycling center nearest you. America, let's turn it to gold. Let's turn it to gold. Warming up to take off your shirt in Montreal. In contrast to the chilly temperatures the last time you were here broadcasting those playoff games. Well, it's so wintry like in some of those days and we called it that way. Some of the Montreal fans didn't appreciate the fact that uh, we alluded to the fact that it was not baseball weather but it certainly is today. And Seaver seems to uh, be accommodating himself rather nicely to these environs. Does he like it better when the weather warms up. Oh I imagine he does. Francona followed by Dawson and Oliver in the Expo six and Terry Francona fouls it away. He's one for two. He grounded out and he singled. Yes it's perfect uh, pitchers weather about 75 to 80 degrees fairly humid. You stay loose you warm up and you stay loose. And especially for the veteran pitcher where that feels all the aches and pains and cold weather for Seaver this is an ideal day in which to work. Terry Francona bluffs the drag bunt but takes strike two one and two. And Seaver breaks his motion wants to get reset. No two and two. Just a slight breeze. Whipping around the Canadian flag and the Expos Division Championship banner. Just a weak poke to try and stay alive and protect the plate, and that he accomplishes two and two. Good old shin guards for O'Berry. It appeared that that one caught him right off the knee. Let's see it. Those late swings are really tough on, yeah, right off the right knee of O'Berry. Even though it's protected, that uh, sends a shiver all the way up to the spine. O'Berry catching today, the regular Alex Trevino just resting, day game following a night game. Nothing wrong with him. Francona skies it to left, and that'll be out of play. You know, Bob Francona represents the philosophy of the Montreal organization in focusing upon the top collegiate players. And he was the player of the year in the college ranks in Arizona, drafted number 180, Wallach the year before out of Cal State Fullerton. The others in, in the lineup, in fact, today, they've got Francona from Arizona, Andre Dawson, Florida A&M, Wallach from Fullerton, Rogers from Tulsa, Spire at UC Santa Barbara. Payoff pitch. Nice piece of hitting as he goes the opposite way for a leadoff single. The sixth hit off Tom Seaver and the second for Francona. Ten years ago, Dick, to follow up on the point you were making, 44% of all players drafted by major league clubs had some kind of college experience, perhaps not graduating, but had played at least a year of college ball. This past year, 82% of all players drafted it played some college ball so almost double. It has uh, been a whole change and of course with the demise of the minor leagues the collegiate university ranks have become the the farm system for the major leagues and in the outstanding baseball programs where it wasn't that way 15 years ago Scott if you were a 
prospect would say hey we don't want you to go to college that wastes four years we want you to get right into our organization now the scouts say yes go ahead you'll develop your skills at a high level at the collegiate ranks get your education too interestingly Fanning must believe that Seaver is throwing very well indeed because he has his number three hitter one of his big guns Andre Dawson trying to sacrifice on the first pitch scoreless game last of the sixth. Seaver chasing Francona back. Al Oliver is on deck and then Gary Carter. So Seaver faces a test here. This time Dawson had no intention of laying one down. A ball and a strike to him. That's a value, though, of just showing the bunt. If, let's say Dawson was taking, and he just showed the bunt. That brings the third baseman in, the first baseman in, gets the infield on the move. Now on that second pitch, if you get something to swing, you've got a little more hitting territory. And he rips one down the line and left it as foul. Now, it's a, for the young player, it's, it's a nice way to help yourself. If your manager or coach has said, I want you to take a pitch, as long as you know you're taking anyway, why not why not show a bunt? Let people think that maybe the sacrifice is on. You might get a man moving just a step or two that could be the difference between a hit if you are swinging away on the next pitch. Saber ahead of Dawson, one and two. Two balls and two strikes. Dawson won the silver bat, the best average for a center fielder in the National League, and also a Golden Glove, the complete player out in center field. You see, he didn't lead in anything, but he was amongst them in everything. Line to short, do they get two? No. Concepcion doesn't even throw. That was right on the nose, but right at Concepcion. Now we talked about the collegiate influence, and it goes right to the top of the organization. John McHale, the, the president. From Notre Dame, Jim Fanning has his master's at Illinois. Three of the coaches on the Montreal staff have college uh, degrees. And Steve Boros there at first base, the coach being one of those. And then the players of the collegiate influence. And, and the Fannings and the McHales just feel that we're getting a, a Galen Sisko. You saw the pitching coach with the Ohio State fullback in the Rose Bowl in the late 50s. That we're not only getting a player that has the physical tools but one that is brighter uh, uh, one who represents himself and the organization uh, better at times so that's uh, that's their philosophy here Oliver struck out swinging and single a man at first and one down last half of the sixth no score Steve Rogers against Tom Seaver Oliver attended Kent State another example for so many years, Oliver and his supporters claimed that he was baseball's most underrated player. Sometimes you can get recognition over the long haul by claiming to be underrated. Then all the insiders say, hey, see this guy? He's the most underrated player in baseball. Pass it on. The next thing you know, the guy's famous. Bob, here's the biggest pitch in the game. You got a great hitter up there, Oliver, 2-0. and Seaver has to come in with a strike with one out. Gary Carter on deck. Let's see what Oliver does with this one. What he does is take a feeble swing and tap it foul. Seaver got him guessing a, a different spot. Looked like Tom a little sink on that one. For Steve Rogers, this fine performance just a continuation of a trend. For Tom Seaver, it might be a breakthrough. Well, regardless of what happens from now on, this is uh, going to make Seaver and the Reds very happy. The count is now even at two and two, and Oliver had a good rip but couldn't get a piece of it. At least not a solid piece. He was right on it. That ball fouled straight back. Al Oliver, part of that very, very potent lineup some years back with the Pirates, more recently with Texas. Boy, the Rangers, what a puzzle. So much talent year in and year out. So much disappointment every year. Oliver drills one, it might get in the gap. It is off the wall on the fly in center field. Oliver fell down and he's going to be held to a single and it's a run scoring single as Francona races around all the way from first base. Well two things in the play. Heady base running by Francona 
Francona. Now this ball is hit. He he reads it properly. Knows it won't be caught. So he's running hard all the way and able to score. And as Oliver watching the ball round at first, he lost his footing, fell down, and had to settle for a single. Here, he, here comes Oliver watching the ball, loses his footing as he comes off the path there, and fast fielding in the outfield, and Oliver, rather than risking being thrown out at second, goes back to first, an RBI single, Francona scoring from first. Not only was that a short double had he kept his footing, but probably since Cedeno misplayed it off the wall and it got by him, a possible triple. 25th RBI of the year for Oliver and Carter who was grounded out twice the 25th RBI for Oliver breaks a tie for the team lead which previously existed with this man Gary Carter who has 24 two balls and no strikes well Seaver had given up a hit in every inning but this is the first frame where he has yielded more than one and the tie is broken. Francona leading off with a single to left. After Dawson lined hard to Concepcion at short, Oliver boomed one off the wall in center and settled for a single. So all three balls have been hit well off Tom Seaver in this inning. That's Bob Shirley, the left-hander, and Greg Harris, recently recalled from Indianapolis, the right-hander. Bill Fisher out to talk with Seaver. As you can see, the borrowing some time to get those relievers ready just in case Seaver has run out of gas. Remember, in eight starts, no complete games. This is about as much pitching as Seaver has allowed himself to do this year, and they want to make sure that uh, they don't leave him in too long in what is still a very close game, but Carter, an exceptionally dangerous hitter at the plate. 2-0 pitch with the runner going and a check swing. Greason backhands it almost blindly. Oliver advances. And Carter grounds out. Oh, that's the kind of swing that'll get Carter back in the dugout talking to himself, 2 and 0, oh, and a little half swing bouncer. Oliver running on the pitch, a good full swing by Carter, and they might have had themselves first and third. Now Warren Cromarty will try and drive in a second run. He is flied out and fouled out. Wallach is the on-deck hitter. Seaver will work carefully to Cromarty, a left-handed batter with first base open. Wallach, a right-handed hitter, waiting on deck. And again inside, 2-0. Cromarty has played first base and the outfield. Played both pretty well for the Expos. Moved to right and has done an excellent job there when they got Al Oliver to play first. Took something off and had him out in front. Two and one. We talked about the collegiate background, and I know the folks down in Miami would be upset if I didn't remind them that Cromarty belongs to that class. He went to Miami Dade College, a two year school there, same school that produced Mickey Rivers, Bucky Dent. Another example of plucking somebody out of the collegiate ranks by Montreal. That's inside three and one. There was a triple play in the Yankee Minnesota game this afternoon and at the end of this inning we'll send you back to Byron Day in New York and you can watch the Yankees turn three. Three one. Check swing roller to bench. And that retires the side. I'm not sure Oliver realized how many outs there were, but in any event, uh, he was running back towards second, not just to avoid a tag play, but I think to go back to second, not realizing how many outs there were. Here's Byron. Bob, here's the triple play you were talking about. First and second for the Yankees, no out. Roy Smalley swings and misses. Launder then throws down to Lenny Fayetto at third base, who bluffs Mercer back to the bag, but Nettles is there. He then throws to Herbeck. Herbeck tags out Nettles, throws back across the diamond, and pitcher Felton tags out Bobby Mercer. Triple play. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. This week, Saturday Night Live is back and better than ever. I told you so. So join host Bruce Stern with musical guest Luca Vandross tonight on NBC. In a year in which car sales were the lowest since 1961, South Burlington Chrysler Plymouth marked a 150% increase in sales. There's a reason. 
South Burlington Chrysler Plymouth's new management and sales team accomplished his 1981 success with superior Chrysler Plymouth products and a greater emphasis on quality of service at a lower cost to the customer. South Burlington Chrysler Plymouth is Northern New England's number one Chrysler Plymouth dealer, enjoying fast growth, proceeding with care, and dedicated to quality. Atari brings the computer age home. It's gonna run, gonna go! Late again, huh, Dad? With an Atari home computer... Have a nice day at the office. ...you can easily work at home or open your home to a world of possibilities. In fact, the hardest part about owning an Atari home computer isn't how to use it, but who gets to use it. Walk it closed, Dad. Mind if I do my work? Hey, no, no problem. Atari home computers, we brought the computer age home. This is Channel 5. Well, the Expos broke the tie on the last half of the sixth on a single by Terry Francona, a single off the wall in center by Al Oliver with Francona hoofing it around from first, and they have given Steve Rogers a 1-0 lead to work with as we enter the seventh inning, and here's Dick Enberg. All right, Robert. Steve Rogers to face Adenio, Bittner, and Bench. 1-0 Montreal. And the way Rogers has been pitching, not only in this game, but this year, that's a big one run. Facing the Reds. Cedeno. A ground single and a ground out to third. Caesar with only one home run this year. Daniel steps out, a chance to talk about that last play of the last inning. Oliver was at second base, and the ball was hit to bench. The play is to run toward bench, but not enough to give him a chance to tag you, and then as the throw goes across the diamond, advance to third. But Oliver retreated to second as if he didn't realize there were two outs at the time the ball was hit. Foul ball. What was interesting also, those last two hitters, with Oliver aboard and two good hitters, Carter and Cromarty, Seaver got them both on check swing, so apparently he still has good stuff. The Reds would have to put two aboard in this inning for Seaver's spot in the order to come up. So chances are, unless they rally, that Seaver will work one more inning. No one throwing at the moment down in the Reds' bullpen. It's two and two on Cedeno. the center field for a base hit. Now Cedeno hits one off the end of the bat and leads off the red seventh with a single. Now let's go back to Byron Day. Dick, Lamar Hoyt might have picked on the wrong team to go for his 10th victory of the, of the year. Here, Miguel Delaunay hits a fastball into the right field bleachers, making it 5 nothing Tribe now on the top of the fifth. All right, Byron, Miguel Delaney, a rare home run for him, the little left-handed batter, and it's 5 nothing for the Cleveland Indians, and the Indians playing fine baseball, looking for their sixth win in a row and trying to end Hoyt's bid at 10 straight this year and 15 in a row over the last two years. And does Cleveland ever have some hot hitters? McBride, Thornton, Hara, they're all on fire. Steve Rogers... Uh, on Mother's Day, some of you were watching the, that game here on NBC, and uh, the various players gave their wishes to their mothers. We didn't get Steve Rogers' comments on, and for Connie, his mother, and his wife Barbara, want to pay our bill here from Steve. We can't say it as well as he did, but he has the same kind of affection and feeling that so many of these athletes do for their moms. I, one of my favorite, I did a Mother's Day special a little 10 years ago and went around to players and asked them about their mother and, and the influence they had on their career. And Rudy May, of the New York Yankees now, he had one of the best answers. I'll give it to you after this pitch. So Daniel, the tying run at first and no one out on the top of the seventh inning and the Red bullpen is busy again. May said that when I was a youngster growing up in Oakland, California, and uh, 10, 12 years of age, he said we had a terrible tragedy in our family. Our house burned down. We lost everything. We moved in with friends or relatives, neighbors. 
he said the first thing that my mother bought out of the the ruins of their life this fire was a baseball glove and gave him that glove to say you can continue even though we've lost so much and they said every time he put a glove on he thought about his mother you get a guy like Mike Schmidt who credits his entire interest in baseball to his grandmother Dettner with a base hit to Daniel will he go to third no he had to check to make sure that ball was going to clear the infield so a couple of soft singles off Rogers and the Reds are in business here in the seventh inning. And Johnny Bench, the batter. So Daniel, the tying run at second. Bittner with his first hit of the game at first. And Bench checking carefully with his third base coach, Russ Nixon, to see if the bunt is on. Bench is not a bad bunter for a guy who has made a living as a slugger. In a one-run ball game, and as hard as the Reds have found runs to come by, especially against Montreal, I'd expect them to at least take one crack at laying one down. Butting on AstroTurf is a tricky proposition, though. It is difficult to deaden the ball. You have to lay it down or try to lay it down in the small dirt portion in front of the plate. If you hit it hard enough, butt it hard enough, to get it past that dirt so that its first bounce is on the turf, very often they're able to get the lead runner on you. Woody Fryman starts to throw in the Montreal bullpen. And the infield indeed looking for the bunt. And Bench not able to get it down in fair territory. In the true sense of the word sacrifice, Bench didn't. Uh, he waited to the last minute to try to disguise and jab the bat out. Didn't really give himself up. Now Wallach, convinced that Bench is bunting, moves in a couple of steps at third. Oliver already creeping in at first base. Going out, two men aboard for the Reds. Now that was the sacrifice. He gave himself up but couldn't put it down. 0-2 and, and Bench unhappy with himself. It's been said so many times, Dick, about a third baseman in this type situation, but it bears repeating. With a bench at the plate and on AstroTurf, Tim Wallach, you see Johnny Bench very upset with himself for failing to get the sacrifice run down. Tim Wallach has to have his heart in his throat on every pitch. A wicked one hopper off Astrid Turf when you're that close. No way to defend yourself. Now no, Bench unable to sacrifice goes down swinging. Rogers sixth strikeout of the game. His first however since the third inning. Now, Rogers Gets the dangerous bench aside, and now the Reds apparently going to make a move with a pinch hitter. Number 29 going to the bat rack, Barranca. Now that's Alex Trevino, oh, Dick. Excuse me, Trevino. He'll bat for O'Berry and then obviously stay in the game and catch. O'Berry was one for two while he was in there, struck out and then singled. Trevino has done a solid job since coming over from the New York Mets in the Foster deal. And uh, his skipper, McNamara, have been very pleased not only with his catching. They knew he was a fine receiver and gets rid of the ball very quickly, but that batting average, he's contributed 278. Jim Fanning, meanwhile, has the veteran left-hander Woody Fryman tuning up in the right field corner just in case. And they're rehearsing as well on NBC, getting ready for Milwaukee, California. Atlanta at Philadelphia. You'll be seeing that as the second part of our doubleheader today. California coming up uh, next on NBC. Not only are they in first place, but they are in a, on a pace right now which would bring them close to three million paying customers for the year. Entirely possible that both the Dodgers and the Angels in the same market would draw a combined six million between them. And San Diego, not too far to the south, will be well over two million. Trevino. Looks at it high, ball one. Seaver is in the on deck circle. But much will depend on what Trevino does here as to whether or not Seaver stays in the game. Could be two.
Bench is out of trouble. Two men on. He strikes out Bench and gets Trevino in a 4-6-3 double play. And now here's another edition of the seventh inning stretch. Spice presents. <laughs> Seventh inning stretch brought to you by Old Spice Aftershave and Cologne, the fresh, clean, masculine scent women love. Satchel Page toiled away his prime, pitching 200 games a year in the barnstorming Negro Leagues. He threw unhittable fastballs from a windmill windup. He threw a hesitation pitch and a baffling array of curves and swerves. Satch was 41 when Jackie Robinson first joined the Brooklyn Dodgers. One year later, Satch was rescued from oblivion by the Cleveland Indians. Over the next six years, Satch had enough stuff left to pitch his way into a pair of all-star games. When he was 59, he made a comeback and hurled three scoreless innings against the Red Sox. And Satchel Page loved to tell the secret of his eternal youth. Never look back, because something may be gaining on you. An old spice man always gets a warm welcome wherever he lands. Because old spice is the clean, fresh, masculine scent so many women love. So even if you love only one woman, you'll love old spice. The man scent so many women love. This is Byron Day in New York. Larry Boa only had three RBIs going into the ballgame today, but this fourth one was fairly important. It drove in Leon Durham to tie the ballgame up at one off at the bottom of the third. Here's the inning-ending double play. Trevino made to order as he grounds it up the middle. That brings Reigns to the bag. The easy flip to Spirer. But what's interesting about the inning, and if even the great ones can't always deliver, bench his failure to sacrifice. That's a two-run single. If Bench is able to move the runners along to second and third, Reigns isn't playing there, and that hopper up the middle is two Cincinnati runs. It's those little things that do add up. And instead of it being 2-1 Cincinnati, it is now still 1-0 with the Expos in charge. Trevino stays in behind the plate, taking over for O'Berry, and Seaver stays in the game. And Bob was watching Seaver as that double play was executed by Montreal, and Tom slammed his equipment down, and he realized that he had a chance to be in front. And would have preferred his team, even if it required that they pinch it for him, preferred that his team get something going. Wallach, Spire, Rogers, the lower end of the Montreal order in the last of the seventh inning, and Wallach drills it into the left field corner. The second two-bagger of the day for Wallach. Bittner, not a great fielder, but not many left fielders would have had a chance at that. Perhaps a guy like Ricky Henderson from Oakland could have had a play on it. Well, this ball is right in his wheelhouse. That's a batting practice pitch, Dick. And he rattled the boards and left for the eighth Montreal base hit off Seaver. And uh, it's a bad sign. You look back through the book, and Seaver has given up a hit to the leadoff man four consecutive innings. And that leadoff man finally scored in the last frame when Francona singled and eventually came around on Oliver's long single to right center. Spire, who handles the bat well, and of course he'll be trying to hit the ball to the right side. He has struck out and singled the left. His job here is not to think about base hits, to just move the runner to third. Get him over there. And hope you get a hit, too. But he has to be thinking right side. There it is. Fouls it into his own dugout. Now, at 0-2, the count against him, he's just got to swing the best he can. The interesting thing from the pitcher's standpoint, you try and pitch him inside to cross him up since he's trying to go to the right side and then risk giving him a pitch that he can pull. Now Seaver in command will see what he does. Outside target. And he, a little off speed inside. Of course, that's another thing. 
take a little off and try to get him out in front where he will have to pull the ball. Harris and Shirley back up and throwing in the Cincinnati bullpen. Good stop by Trevino. And Bryn Smith, right hander, takes over for Woody Freeman. He's getting ready in the Expo pen. Cincinnati will have the pitcher's spot, Milner and Oster, in the eighth inning. There's the young right hander. Good breaking ball. Jeff Reardon is their bullpen ace. You'd have to figure he'd be the guy they'd call on with a one run lead in the eighth or ninth. Line to Concepcion on the short hop. And Spirer is out. So Cheever induced Spirer to hit it to the left side. Hit hard, however, right at Concepcion. Dave not Concepcion will be 34 in a matter of a few weeks, and not many shortstops have been able to play regularly when they reach their mid 30s 34, 35, 36. You don't see that too often. Other positions, maybe. Shortstop, not often. He's a young man, though, at that age. Covers the ground as well as any in the National League. We saw Rick Burleson on the pregame show, and Rick uh, rated by. American League players is having the best range at shortstop. Concepcion right there among National Leaguers. Rogers up there, not to box. A little butcher boy chop was going to try to hit it to the right side. Remember in the playoffs last year when he beat Steve Carlton 3 0, he drove in two of those three runs with a base hit. He's got that unique pitcher's batting style. Fall away to left, swing to center, and hit it to right. Little mustard on that one. A good low fastball from Seaver, and it's 0 2. Twenty-eight thousand thirty-seven here at Olympic Stadium today. Concepcion across to Dreesen, two away, and Wallach still at second base. here last evening even with a transit strike 28,000 today and they expect the crowd up to around 40,000 tomorrow on a promotion day those that bought a ticket this afternoon have seen a fine pitchers duel against Rogers and Seaver one nothing Montreal home half of the seventh and Tim Raines trying to add to that lead for the Expos he was hitless last night he's over three today A year ago, only the strike and then a late season hand injury kept this fella from very seriously threatening, if not breaking, the Lou Brock stolen base standard of 118. This year he is behind the likes of Omar Marino and Bob Dernier in that department in the National League and well behind Ricky Henderson of the A's overall in the majors. If Henderson stays healthy, we're about to counter them while we're in the Memorial Day weekend and close to one third of the season at Henderson's pace if he stays healthy he could steal 140 bases this year doesn't figure that a man's going to go through the year without some problem but oh what a sensational start by Henderson line drive to Oster so Seaver had the atom ball working for him after Wallach had doubled, Spire hit it hard. Rogers out on the ground ball to short, and Reigns lines out to second. Two innings to go. Montreal leads by one. Being a lumberjack, you'd think the last thing I'd do on my day off is climb a tree. If you knew how much we got for winning, you'd know we don't do it for the money. But after it's over, the one thing we'd better get is a really great deal. Nice race. Come on, guys. It's Miller time. Miller time. Time for America's quality beer. You know, I let you win, don't you? Miller High Life. If you've got the time, Miller's got the beer. I'm Johnny Bench. This is Krylon Spray Paint, the other leading national brand. And here comes my fast pitch, so watch close. Krylon Special Formula goes on smooth, just like a professional finish. And just 12 minutes later, it's dry to the touch. No runs, no drips, no errors. The other brand's still tacky after one hour. Let's see it again. Krylon dry after 12 minutes. Other brands still tacky after one hour. Did you catch that? 
Krylon, for a smooth, fast, professional finish. Unfiring, coal cranking, dirt fighting, road handling, money saving, hard working, AC Delco. You know, dirt can do more damage in there than it does out here. That's why it makes real good sense to use AC, oil and air filters, because they're one hard working solution to internal pollution. Hot firing, coal cranking, dirt fighting, road handling, money saving, hard working, AC Delco. Don't miss the very best in baseball. The Giants slide into Chicago to try to catch the red hot Cubbies. Or the Mariners sail east to tangle with the Tigers on NBC Sports next Saturday. Red skipper John McNamara goes to his bench. Herman Barranca will bat for Tom Seaver. Seaver with a solid seven innings. Allowed one run earned and eight hits. Struck out five. Showed good control. Didn't walk a man. Barranca batting at 286. Eight hits and 26 at bats. As a pinch hitter, and almost all of those at bats have been as a pinch hitter. He's six for 24, 250. One hop, column. One out in the eighth inning. It is still Seaver's game if the Reds can score for him here in the eighth inning. Top of the order, Ed Milner. His line is short, flying out twice, over three. Milner has cooled off considerably in the past couple of weeks. He took the leadoff spot away from Oster doesn't get very many walks took the leadoff spot away from him early in the season had a couple of four hit games and was sizzling but he has tailed off when the season began it was supposed to be householder hurdle and Cedeno as the Reds new outfield only a third of that remains get deep to right if it's fair it's trouble it is them all for the first time this year. And the game is even at one. And for Milner, that is his first major league home run. Well, Tom Seaver's not in the dugout right now, but he did one thing for the right-hander. He took an L away. It's a 1-1 tie. Here's Oster, who hit his first of the year last night. So Milner pulling it down the line, where it's 325, and the game is anew. earlier this year and now he's healthy he was supposed to be one of their starting outfielders Milner stepped in never relinquished the job yeah, Hurdle, have... meanwhile sent back down to Indianapolis so of the projected starting three only Cedeno and center remains with Bittner and Vale platooning in left and Milner the regular in right and a lot of hard hitters in Columbus Ohio Ohio State University Milner from that city is got a little punching of his own busy today takes care of Oster for the second consecutive time and with two out it brings up Dave Concepcion and some interesting names dotting minor league rosters this 42 year old Woody Fryman gets loose again and there's their ace Jeff Reardon the right hander you got guys like Bobby Bonds and Lynn McLaughlin at the Yankee farm in Columbus Wayne Garland I believe is in Charleston trying to work his way back to the major leagues Mark the bird Fidrich as we saw on the pregame show at the Red Sox AAA outpost in Pawtucket. Glenn Hurdle back in Indianapolis. And the International League has some talent. Concepcion drills it into the right field corner. And he has a double. Warren Cromarty playing it off the wall like a hockey goalie able to box it in 
That ball gets away, and it could have really been trouble. Concepcion, boy, he gets all of this one. He drills it to right. It's a fastball, and Concepcion showing the kind of power that you don't really expect when you see how slender he is, but he's a wiry guy. He is deceptively strong. He has occasional home run punch, and he hits that ball better than 325 feet on the fly to the opposite field, and it brings Jim Fanning to the mound. There's a tough call for Fanning. That pitcher, you know he doesn't want to come out in a 1-1 game, but now the go-ahead run is at second with two out, and Fanning, he's the man has to make the decision. You saw him talk with Carter, undoubtedly asking Carter, does he still have good stuff? And the answer is yes. Rogers will stay. Up man Dan Dreesen, the leading hitter on this Reds club in the last three weeks, and his average up to 305, although he's hitless today, he struck out, flied out, grounded out. The total's almost identical, a run, eight hits for each side. Nub to Rogers. But Eddie Milner's first major league home run has tied it for Cincinnati. We go to the home half of the eighth, even at one. As the morning snowfall blankets the Ryan's retreat, a pasty film blankets their mouths. Morning. morning. Skull? Uh-uh. Mine lasts. Uh, honey, your medicine breath. That's what lasts. Scope leaves your breath minty fresh. Mine kills germs. Scope kills germs. Has two powerful germ killers. Try. Mindy Fresh. And? No medicine breath. Morning. Morning. Scope fights bad breath. Doesn't give medicine breath. Ford is making it easier for Americans to buy and own a car. At every Ford dealer in every state, whether you finance or purchase outright, you can get hundreds in cash all from Ford right now on new Escorts, EXPs, Mustangs, Granadas, and Fairmonts. Then you get Ford Care. Two years of the closest thing to cost-free driving. About all you pay for is gas. Hey, who gives you both cash and coverage like Ford? Nobody. Hi, I'm Ted Williams. You know, over the years, the All-Star Game has provided me with many thrills. This is the 13th consecutive year that baseball fans have voted to select the All-Star team. You can help choose the starting lineups for the All-Star Game in Montreal on July 13th by voting in this year's election. Ballots are free at retail stores featuring a Gillette All-Star display and at the major and minor league parks. Balloting ends July 4th, so be sure to get out and vote. Furnished by Major League Baseball and Gillette. This is Byron Day in New York. Up in Minnesota, the Twins have broken out on top. Dave Engel triples into the power alley in right center, scoring Ken Herbeck from first base. That was the first run of the ball game. They added one more. It's now 2-0, top of the fifth. Thank you, Byron. And here in Montreal, Joe Price inherits the game. Tied at one. That's his record, one and one. Fine ERA of 1.48. 25-year-old from Inglewood, California. Now makes his home in Lakeside, Lakeside, California. Last year, a very quiet 6-1, and one, ERA 2.50, and he saved four games. And in 1980, he was 7-3. He'll face Francona, Dawson, and Oliver, the Expos. They scored their run off Seaver in the sixth inning. A leadoff hit by this man, Francona. He came around on Oliver's long single to right center. Would have been a double, but Oliver fell down, rounding first base. But Ed Milner's first major league home run in the eighth inning, top half of this inning, has tied it for Cincinnati. Here's the situation now for John McNamara, Dick. Normally, Tom Hume would be in the game, but he injured that knee while shagging flies uh, during batting practice a couple of nights ago, as you pointed out. So he has to go to Price. Now, earlier when he was losing 1-0, he had Shirley and Harris warming up, and evidently, had he stayed behind, they would have worked the Expo 8. But when the game became even, he got Price up and ready in a hurry. Now he's considered McNamara's best reliever with Hume on the shelf. Price worked in last night's game. He 
gave up a home run to Carter. Earlier we talked about Francona and his responsibilities as the number two hitter behind base stealing Tim Raines. He has impressed me as a mature hitter today. Took a Seaver change up up the middle, took him to the opposite field for a base hit another time. And he walks to lead off the eighth inning. Now Seaver who went through seven innings without giving up a free ticket. And Price loses the leadoff man in the eighth. So that's five consecutive innings. As the Expos have had their first man on. And that is the first walk for anybody in this ballgame. Rogers and Seaver evidencing excellent control. Joe Price has an ERA of 0.86 over his last 14 appearances. So he's a hot pitcher. Let's see how Dawson and the Expos play it. He's going to play for one. And Dawson fouls his butt try back. Andre single on an infield chopper to third. He's fouled out and lined out. Jim Kern, big angular right-hander. Gladwin, Michigan tuning up. That ball in on Dawson. Foul ball. Francona going around to third. And oh, they say hit him. Out. Apparently they're going to say the ball hit Dawson in the knee or foot, in which case he's aboard. And they're going to look at the ball to see if there's any shoe polish on it, perhaps. They want to see whether it hit him in the foot. Let's see on our replay. Yes, it hit him right on the toe. No question, he was hit by the pitch. Francona now is standing at second base, anticipating that they will give him first. And plate umpire Dave Malone says, yes, that's what you're entitled to. That Terry is Tata helped him out. And that's something which is good to see. Malone was one of the umpires who came up a few years back during the umpire strike. And as you know, the veteran umpires are not especially friendly to the newcomers who came aboard as what they consider scabs or strike breakers. But there used to be a time where they gave the young umpires no help on the field. Now there is complete cooperation on the field. They may not socialize in the umpire's room or away from the diamond, but on the field it's strictly professional as you saw Tata and Pallone get together to make the right call and now Tata to explain it to McNamara. Now McNamara had already asked Trevino. He knew that the ball hit Dawson. But his purpose there was there, there's the ball hitting the front foot of Dawson. But McNamara's purpose was no more than to let the umpire Pallone know that he couldn't call it. He had to get somebody else to help him. Nothing wrong with that, mind you, but just the, the unwritten law of the game. The manager has to remind the umpire, hey, you called something you didn't really see. Not an obvious uh, strong argument, but McNamara <laughs> wanted to make his point. That's reminiscent of the incident which I believe involved Hurricane Hazel of the Milwaukee Braves in a World Series in the 50s against the Yankees, which was one of the most famous instances of a request to look for shoe polish on the ball. And using that circumstantial evidence, the umpire said, OK, Hurricane, take first base. It happened in another World Series in 1969 with Jones. Leon Jones of the Mets against Earl Weaver's Baltimore Orioles. And was Earl ever in rage. Oliver swings away. Base hit the left. Play at the plate. And he's out. Larry Bittner with a strike from left field and a most unusual base running or coaching by the Montreal Expos with no one out. Why take a chance? They will question why Billy DeMars waved Francona around. Terry runs pretty well. Bittner is not an especially good defensive outfielder, not an especially strong arm, but he played it cleanly, and the throw to Trevino was right there. They could have had the bases loaded with nobody out. And Trevino blocking the plate with that left leg, 
And you saw Francona as he made his slide. He made his slide right over the leg. He actually was there in time to be safe, but he had to skip over Trevino, and by that time, the Cincinnati catcher had the tag on him. That's really a great piece of camera work. We could see that again. We got it from various angles, but the way that Trevino blocked the plate was the key to the entire play, and we will look at it again. But first, let's break for this special word, a change of pitchers. It's tied at one in the bottom of the eighth in Montreal. 1952, George Stephen invents the incredibly durable Weber kettle. Incredible. It soon becomes the best-loved way to broil burgers and roast the Thanksgiving turkey. We love it. But nobody loves cleaning out the ashes. We don't love that. Weber engineers, deep in thought, invent the one-touch system. Weber's one-touch opens to circulate heat and seal in the juices. Ooh. Weber's one-touch closes to put out the fire. Ah. Best of all, Weber's one-touch sweeps out all the ashes. Thank you. You're welcome. The Weber one-touch, only from Weber. When Seiko in Tokyo sends executives overseas, they're given Citicorp traveler's like checks. try on? Because who knows where they might end up. Ten gallons. Five gallons? <laughs> Citicorp traveler check, okay? Sure, okay. Accepted round the world. Refunds in thousands of locations. For my granddaughter. Howdy, partner. Because you never know where you might end up. Citicorp traveler's checks. You two good friends. Wow. Good night. Now I see why you guys dragged me up here. Ooh. Hey, hit him with the best part. Bet the low umbrella's still cold. You brought low umbrella all the way up here? No, 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 no. You did. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. You're not mad at us, are you, Pete? You're not. Just lucky it was low and brow. Let it fall. Byron Day in New York. Roy Smalley has just cut the, the Twins lead in half. He doubles in Greg Nettles. It's now two to one. The Twins are still leading up in the dome in Minneapolis in the top of the fifth. Let's go back to Dick and Bob. Gary Carter has just hit a three-run home run over the left center field fence, and Montreal's up four to one. And look at the welcoming committee outside the Expo dugout. from reliever Jim Kern is drilled over the left center field fence. Gary Carter's 10th home run of the year. Comebacker by Cromarty and Kern throws him out. There's two away. Well, normally, there's around a minute or more when a reliever comes in and it's standard practice to break for a commercial. All the networks do and the local stations do too. Kern took a couple of pitches and might have wanted to take a few more because the very first delivery, Carter drilled the left center field for a three-run homer. And Montreal is up 4-1. to one. Carter, his 10th round triple of the year. He claims the club RBI lead with 27. So a walk to Francona. Dawson hit by a pitch. Oliver singled, but Francona thrown out at the plate. Kern replaced Price, and Carter wasted no time in giving Montreal a lead as they go for their eighth win in a row. Their all-time record here in Montreal is 10 in a row. And for the last place Reds, that sound of bat against ball delivered by Carter had to be deafening. Wallach hits it well, but not well enough. Three runs, two hits, thanks to Gary Carter, no one left. And in Montreal, 28,000 plus is being the Expos take a four to one lead. Right guard solid, because a man needs all the protection he can get. Right guard solid has an action-triggered formula, triggered to release protection when your body needs it most. 
So the more you sweat, the more protection you get. Rake Guard Solid. Action trigger to help keep you dry and odor free all day. Rake Guard Anti Perspirant Solid. The more you sweat, the more protection you get. If you could repaint the world, you might decide to change a few things. But you'd still want to use a quality paint like the Kmart Performer, so your good taste would show. It's manufactured for Kmart by Dutch Boy, so you know it's good. The Performer is a quality exterior paint with nine-year durability. Keep it in mind when it's time to paint your own little corner of the world. The Performer. Quality by Dutch Boy. The price by Kmart. Who is America's leader in radials? Goodyear. We outsell all foreign radials combined. One reason? The Goodyear Wrangler. A light truck radial that's all season, all terrain, all position. Wrangler gives you outstanding traction, so you can take it just about anywhere. The Goodyear all season Wrangler. It's one reason Goodyear is the leader in radials. No foreign maker of radials even comes close. When you need radials, come up to Goodyear. Saturday, Stella becomes a mayor's assistant and turns the tables on Harper Valley. Then, it's double trouble when Gramps asks two ladies on the same day. And the Mandrells welcome Donnie Osmond. Steve Rogers leading 4-1 thanks to his battery mate, Gary Carter, who Homer, let's go to New York. Byron Day has it for you. Okay, Dick, we certainly do. Gary Carter hitting his 10th home run of the year with his 27th RBI, a three-run homer. Expos now lead it four to one. Now in the top of the ninth, as you know. And now Steve Rogers just three outs away from his seventh win of the year. His ERA, the best in the National League, at 174. And he's been tough again today. The only run, Eddie Milner's first major league home run. In left field, Dan Norman, an ex Cincinnati employee. And Ter uh, Terry Francona's moved from left to first base defensively replacing Al Oliver. Sedeno, two singles and three trips today. Dick, if this holds up, Joe Price, who entered the game, replacing Tom Seaver in the bottom of the eighth and walked the first hitter, then hit another, he would be the losing pitcher. Although it was Kern, he threw the gopher ball to Carter. It was reminiscent of the Dodgers A's World Series win. Ground ball by Cedeno. Wallach low and Francona digs it out. So Francona moving to first base and makes a nice backhanded pickup of Wallach's throw. One up. Remember when Mike Marshall there was a rhubarb as you see it again and Marshall for seven eight minutes didn't throw a pitch and Joe Rudy was the batter. First pitch, Rudy guessed he's got to come fastball, and Rudy was sitting on the fastball. Homer won the game and they won the World Series for the Oakland A's back, I believe that was 72 or 3. And the homer by Carter takes the gloss off a play by this man, Larry Bittner, who now steps in for the Reds. Bittner, not renowned as a good fielder, came up with a base hit and threw the runner out of the plate, and when it was still a tie ball game, a base hit by Al Oliver in the left field. And it also takes third base coach Billy DeMars off the hook. He sent Terry Francona around instead of settling for bases loaded nobody out and Bittner nailed Francona at the plate. But then it was all academic as Carter unloaded the three run homer. 0 oh, and 2 on Bittner. This week's NBC Miller Highlight player of the game is Steve Rogers. Rogers who was the National League Pitcher of the Month in April and he's been the pitcher of the year thus far even though his record is seven and three. Miller Highlight happy to present a check for one thousand dollars in the name of Steve Rogers to the Special Olympics. Rogers our player of the game. One and two on Bittner. Rogers has scattered eight hits giving up the one run Milner's homer. Might be struggling a bit now. And just in case the top left and right handed short men are ready for Montreal, the veteran Fryman and the hard throwing Reardon. Up the middle. Great play, fire. Fire raging far to his left. Ball 
a fielding play and throws out Fittner two away. There's one of the top defensive plays of the game. So the Reds one out away from their 27th loss of the season. They started today nine full games behind Atlanta. Johnny Bench runs it off. Bench a single is grounded out and struck out. Strikes on bench, ninth inning, four to one, Montreal. He fooled bench, but it didn't bite the corner. And the ball game is over. Punctuates his seventh victory with a strikeout of Johnny Bench. 